You prayed and believed your whole life, and here you are. Explain that to me. What do you say to people that are offended by your show? You should pray to Jesus in every episode. We disown him, he'll disown us. A 12-year-old watches his mother dying of cancer. A God who would allow that is not worth believing in. Life is really a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury and signifying nothing. Name? Uh, Wheaton. Josh Wheaton. Philosophy 150. You might want to think about a different uh, instructor. Come on, man, it can't be that bad. Think uh, Roman Coliseum. People cheering for your death. I am Professor Radisson. This is philosophy 150. I would like to bypass senseless debate altogether and jump to the conclusion which every sophomore is already aware of. There is no God. All that I require from each of you is that you fill in the papers I've just given you with three little words. God is dead. It's the weakness. Something wrong. I can't do what you want, I'm a Christian. You cannot bring yourself to admit that God is dead, and you will need to defend the antithesis. I think Jesus is my friend. You think Jesus is God. I don't want to disappoint him. So your acceptance of this challenge may be the only meaningful exposure to God and Jesus that I'll ever have. It's me. He's not dead. I don't want anyone to get talked out of believing in him just because this professor thinks they should. Mr. Wheaton, are you ready? We're going to put God on trial. Do you think you're smarter than me? Do not try to humiliate me in front of my students. In that classroom, there is a God. I am him. This experiment is over. You get to decide who the most important person in your life is. Me, Professor Radisson. What I have to do with this thing, I feel like it's something that God wants me to do. I, I can't just turn away from it. You just want to ensnare them in your primitive superstition. What I want is for them to make their own choice. That's what God wants. You have no idea how much I'm going to enjoy failing you. Yeah, but who are you really looking to fail? Me? Oh, God. God's not dead. He's surely alive. He's living on the inside. his existence you know the truth so why do you hate him it's a very simple question why do you hate god god's not dead he's surely alive he's living on the You want to do the thing? Do the thing. You do the thing so well. I like it starting with you doing the thing. <laughs> Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, <laughs> and with me is... Uh, Professor Steve Galindo. And before we start today's podcast, I want to say that we're going to be talking about a movie... And it's called God's Not Dead. And in order to talk about it, we just need to just we need to start fresh. And one of the things that we need to do right now is just I want all of you listening to get a piece of paper and write on it. God's not dead is dead <laughs> because and we're just going to get that out of the way. I mean, if you don't do that, you're going to fail this podcast. <laughs> So I want you all to write God is dead, God's not dead, is dead on a piece of paper. Wait, what are you doing, young uh, college freshman? What is your name? Josh? 
Are you trying to tell me that God's not dead isn't dead? Well, we will have a debate. We will have, I will give you three chances to defend the film God's Not Dead. I, I hated this movie. Are I you, hated this movie. Are you sure you don't want them to text it to everyone they know? <laughs> right. You know, when your film is is touting if your film is a proudly proudly touting a special appearance by cast members of duck dynasty then you know that that's not going to be a sign of quality <laughs> not at all <laughs> really really bad yeah really. But, but still a lot of work went into this piece of propaganda <laughs> Well, the interesting the interesting thing about a about this film is that I really do think that like whether you're it doesn't matter what your belief system is, whether you're Christian or whether you're a Catholic or a Muslim or uh, an atheist. I think there's one thing that we can agree with is that the movie God's Not Dead sucks. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And a lot sucks in it. Mm hmm. But it what, does. what I find a little frightening is that it looks like very well thought out garbage. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully hey. I can make that a little more clear as we get into a further discussion of this. Yeah, turd. <laughs> of course. It, it, like um, it, the movie, the, the golden compass. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's a movie. I think, um, Nicole Kidman was in it, but I've seen they made a big it. screen. Yeah, they made a movie out of it, and it's based on a series of books. And it starts off as kind of like a very normal, big fantasy adventure thing for kids. But by the end of the book series, the bad guy is God. Yeah. And, and they have to kind of go and kill God. So when they did a movie of The Golden Compass, the first book in the series, a lot of people were protesting. And they were saying things like, oh, you know, people shouldn't go see this movie and blah, blah, blah. And I remember reading a wonderful review from a Catholic priest who said, don't go and see, don't not see this movie because you're offended by it. Don't see the movie because it's a bad movie. Yeah. And I thought that's a very wonderful way to look at this film, especially from a priest. Like I was impressed by that because here's a priest saying, regardless of how you feel about this film, whether you're offended or not, the movie sucks. Yeah. And that's how I feel about God's Not Dead. Not talking about your feelings about organized religion or anything like that. Just God's Not Dead. Even if you're I would like to think that even if I was a devout Christian man, that I would say, yeah, this movie kind of sucks. Yeah. There's a lot wrong with the movie God's Not Dead. But it, it's so it's so weird because last week we did Oogie Loves and and um I, I've been saving all of my notes, all of my strange looking notes that look like they're the serial killers like manifesto. I've been saving all of the notes that I write down for the podcast. And in the beginning, I'm writing like a couple of things that I got from Wikipedia or IMDb or a couple of little facts here and there. And then it just got to be more and more and more information. And then last week, I, I, I filled two full pages with the Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure. <laughs> and I thought, yes. man, this is like too much. This is too much. So I, I've been I've been compiling my God's Not Dead notes for um, for about two weeks now. I've been working on notes for this. And at first I had just one page and then that was it. I said, that's enough. That's all I'm going to do. But then I said, oh, you know what? I'll also make a page of, you know, a, a small little bit about my my problems with organized religion and Christianity. And that quickly filled up an entire page of my problems with Christianity and organized religion. It just exploded. <laughs> that page exploded, a violent explosion of my problems with Christianity. And then I, I, 
um, this was just a, a hard movie to sit through. It was a very hard movie to sit through. And it's funny because it's right after the Oogie Loves, which I thought was going to be like the worst. I thought, oh, man, nothing's going to beat the Oogie Loves. Oh, well, God's not dead. We, oh, that'll be fun to watch. No, it wasn't fun to watch. So are you no. trying to tell me, are you trying to tell me with a straight face that you were not engrossed by the acting work? of Ken Sorbo and Dean fucking Kane in the same movie, Hercules and Superman. See, it's, well, number one, it's obvious, uh, Kevin Sorbo, it's obvious that he has stopped taking whatever uh, performance enhancers he took back in the day last century when he yes. was doing the adventures of Hercules because <laughs> dude looks like a stick figure now. Dude <laughs> looks like a, like, a, like a bizarre stick figure. Um, yeah. And number two, Dean Kane is currently in a big fight with Brandon Routh because they're both trying to win the title of worst Superman. Yes. <laughs> and Brandon Routh's like, mine is the worst. I was only in one film and it was horrible. And Dean Kane goes, oh, yeah, well, I turned Superman into a bad uh, soap opera character. <laughs> I never the watched that show. <laughs> I, I, I've I, never watched I Smallville excited. either. I got ex I never watched Smallville, but when I when I first uh, started dating my wife, uh, we're about to celebrate our ten year wedding anniversary. But we had we've been together for over twelve years. So when I first met her and I went to her house the first time, like no nobody in the family would talk to me because they were all on the couch watching Smallville. Yeah. And they were all just sitting there watching it. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'll sit here and watch Smallville. And I remember saying, oh, man, I, I can't wait for when they show Superman in the outfit and flying and stuff. And the whole family just snapped at me. They said, hey, the creators of this show specifically made a rule, OK? No flights, no tights. That's what the creator <laughs> said. The creator said, no flights, no tights. They're never going to show that. And then I, being the calm voice of reason said, yeah, but eventually there will come a time five or ten years from now when the ratings suck, and so they will, of course, show him flying, and of course they'll show him in a suit. I mean, that's just what they will eventually do to try and get ratings. No, they won't. They said no flights, no tights. That means they'll never do it. And that is exactly what they did for, like, the last year or two before they canceled the show. This explains something to me, though. What? I I always thought it was no tights, no flights, mm. which is why I woke up in several dark alleys smelling a pee. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. I, re I retroactively hate this show now. <laughs> this is really... The, the only thing that I liked... There's only one thing I liked about that show and that there was a, a small little blonde chick and she was a reporter and she was a friend of Superman and she knew Superman's secret identity and I he, her name might be Chloe but I'm not exactly sure because I never fully watched the show but she was created just for the TV show Smallville and they liked her so much that they added her into the comic books and I liked that idea of them doing that they did the same thing with uh, Harley Quinn because she started as a character for the Batman animated series. She yeah. was never anywhere else. Now she has her own comic book and all of this. And I thought, oh, well, that's neat that they're doing that. So I don't and, see Marvel ever doing that any, any time ever. And frankly, strangely hot. Yes. I don't yes. know why. Very much so. It, it, oh, man. It, see, I had more fun making fun of the Oogie Loves in the Big Balloon Adventure yeah. than I did making fun of God's Not Dead. It, it was just more fun to kind of sit there and watch Oogie Loves with my mouth hung open going, oh, my God, what the hell is this? This is just horrible. But I was having fun making fun of it. This one was just it, it, just homework to get through. It was difficult. It was hard. This is this is a bad bad movie. Before we before we jump into the movie and before we talk about anything else, I have a list here. I kept this list. Don't don't forget your homework either. Oh yes yes, we will get to the homework. But 
I, I just I thought it'd be good to say this now before we get to it. Sure. But I made a, a list of enemies according to <laughs> God's Not Dead. Oh, 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 I want to hear that. Can it's we discuss them list. too? Sure, okay, sure. Okay. It's a pretty big list of enemies according to God's Not Dead. Go for it. Um, atheists are enemies. Yes, yes. Although we see that from somebody who is really actually not an atheist and it's kevin oh. sorbo for christ's sake kevin sorbo. but yes atheists uh, i would say atheists are at the top of the list yeah yeah uh college professors uh oh definitely or anybody who's smart <laughs> frankly yeah. which leads me to my next one colleges period yes just the idea of colleges that is an enemy to a Christian in the world of God's not dead. Liberals, yes. Bloggers, yeah. I thought you meant. I thought you were going to call out individual people, but go ahead. No, 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 no. Just in general, in general. <laughs> Liberal bloggers. Liberal bloggers, yeah. Redheads. Uh huh. Gingers. I had the hardest time because there's that scene where um, the Duck Dynasty people are going to church and suddenly yes. they get blindsided by an evil feminist liberal blogger who yeah. starts trying to use gotcha media for her for her left wing blog. And then in a in a scene shortly after that. Hey, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. And with the power of Jesus. Yes. By speaking the word. He silences her. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. But in a scene shortly afterwards, uh, she gets cancer, probably because she doesn't believe in Jesus. That's implied. Yes. But it was at that scene that I said, oh, so the girl, the feminist blogger, the liberal blogger who blindsided the Duck Dynasty person is not a 12 year old girl. <laughs> yeah. I did not I didn't put oh so the redhead is actually not like a nine year old she's actually a grown adult with feelings and emotions oh okay I, I was confused by that the only there's a lot of, of uh, enemies on this in, in this movie yes. but the only one that I agree with is gingers gingers you agree with yeah. that I don't know I find them really hot really yeah I'm, uh, I'm oddly big. enough ex except scully yeah, I don't on, a case by case basis, on a case by case basis. On a case by case basis. Um Muslims. Muslims. Oh, that was that was so beautifully racist on yeah, so many yeah. levels. They're all evil and they all just like the men beat the women and they hate Jesus and that's why they're all going to hell. Yeah. Um wine. Uh wine. Yeah. Yeah. Wine. Yeah. Possibly vegans. Because they show a lot of the liberal bloggers' vegan bumper stickers at the moment when she realizes that her car was broken into and her GPS was stolen. Well, I, I don't know how implied it is in the movie, and I hate to go outside the movie, but I think we could say, just in general, God hates vegans. Yeah. Uh, I'm not Dawkins. too fond of them either, to be fully honest. <laughs> yeah. Richard Dawkins. Oh, enemy. oh, yeah. Unmarried women. Enemy. Yeah. Because grandma makes a point of realizing that the you don't have a ring. Why is that? <laughs> the, the, the mom with the Alzheimer's. The one who likes chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Who eats chicken? The one who likes chicken. Uh, reporters. Reporters. Uh-huh. Yep. The Chinese. The Chinese. The Chinese are all evil. Well, well, it, 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 and they're godless communists. I mean, that mm -hmm. was that I was like wondering at first because uh, you know I didn't specifically get that he was Chinese at first. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I did, but it like didn't register. You know, it's just like yeah. No, there's, there's the Asian guy. Yeah. He's eventually going to wind up playing synthesizer. You yeah. Know? Um. And then later on, it kind of clicked, and it was like, oh, it's because they're godless communists. That's yeah. why. That's yeah. why his father keeps reacting the way he does. Yeah, and also, and also, yeah, uh, vicariously communists. They don't mention that communists are, in, are evil in the movie, 
but it's kind of assumed. Yes, but you know, there is such a huge difference between Chinese communism and Marxism, where religion is all over China. <laughs> yeah, it's not something yeah. that's being suppressed. Yeah. Well, no, Christians are being suppressed everywhere. Don't you know that? Yeah. And in fact, in China, um, this is what I learned from years on, working on the Microsoft help desk. Um, the official business language of China is English. Really? So if you want to succeed in, in business in China, even if you're Chinese, you have to learn English. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. Oh, and, and the other uh, big, big enemy in God's Not Dead, Disney World. Disney World, yes. Yes. Oh, are you sure it was a big enemy? I think it was kind of an analogy for heaven. Really? So Disney World is heaven. Yeah, because that was a whole separate that was a whole separate plot line. It barely had anything to do with the rest of the movie. I just you felt, know, but I it was perhaps God just didn't want him to go to Disney World. No, that's that's kind of a it's a wonderful life story. You know? The, yeah. the the priest, he his faith is lacking. And this other whatever the hell he was, a missionary. I guess, yeah. Basically kind of an angelic figure. Yeah. Okay. Where where the car keeps not starting because of the priest's lack of faith. And the angel just kind of <laughs> sitting back from most the of the things you just said was amazing. Yeah. The car the, did not start because of the priest's lack of faith. Yes. And the angel just sat back through pretty much the whole thing, just kind of snicker in the background at him. You yeah. know? And yeah. then we then we get to the final scene where then the angel shows him what faith is about and the car starts. And I hope they were still going to Disney World, but you know, kind of had a hard time paying real close attention to some of this shit. <laughs> the the one thing that I that I took away from this, and I might be wrong in this, but I'm pretty sure that I'm not, is Josh, our hero Josh. Yes. He he decides to debate the evil college professor. And he and, was evil. He was kind of he was kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all the bad guys are having just the the absolute best. That is some chewing scenery, chewing shit. <laughs> oh yeah. But um, the his first day in class, he's he's signing up and everything, and the guy who's there tries to dissuade him from taking this guy's philosophy class. Mm -hmm. And, but he decides to go anyway. He debates the professor. The professor is like all angry and then he dies at the end of the movie. Yes. Spoiler alert. Yes. But if, if either Josh didn't take the class or if he decided to listen to his uh, hot ass girlfriend and not debate the professor, right. would the professor still be alive? I have a feeling that Josh is pretty much responsible for Kevin Sorbo's death in this movie. I, I have such a hard time saying that because I can't make sense in my head of how the car hit the fucking guy. Yeah. Doesn't he look? What kind of moron is he? <laughs> mm -hmm. It was yeah. one car on a city street. It's not that big a deal. Oh, no. Kevin Sorbo's dying in the street. We should try and save his life. No, let's just try and convert him to Christianity. Yeah. It's like, wow, can't you call 911 or try and help him, you know, not die? <laughs> it's like, you're, you're on the street and, and you might be dead soon. So yeah. I guess now you have some time to talk about Jesus Christ. But you also have Kevin Sorbo, who is supposed to be a professor. Okay, yeah. and I can only imagine he would have to be a tenured professor to get away with all the shit he pulled off in this class. Exactly. In particular, the whole idea that one kid in the gallery objects and you 
then do the rest of your class on the fly? <laughs> yeah. Like, no yeah. plan? You just walk in every day and hope it goes all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I want that There's job. <laughs> I'll just move. Okay. Before we continue any more on God's Not Dead, let's talk about our homework. Um. Oh, and I want to say... If you hear any weird noises, I am very much multitasking right now. Okay. What else are you doing? I'm I'm eating I'm eating popcorn and I'm eating uh some pop tarts and I'm cutting stickers uh-huh. and working on a uh uh activity game for story time tomorrow. Cool. And I'm drinking coffee and beer and um I'm I'm on my phone. That shit texting will, people. So that, I'm like all over the place right now. Okay. That shit will make you go sideways, coffee and beer. Well, I need the coffee to keep me hyped up for the podcast. I, I, I just I and then I need the beer because I get so excited during the podcast that I need something to take me down. Okay. Because one of the things that I learned doing this podcast for as long as I have is that after like a really good podcast. I will be like pretty much uh, on crack. Nice. Just okay. absolutely like, 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 like I've done so much cocaine. And I'll be like, oh man, that was a great podcast. Oh, that was so much fun. Oh, let me, hey, Emerald, let me tell you about this thing that I did. And oh, we were talking about <laughs> this. And so I really need to like bring myself down. So that's why I've got the coffee and the beer. Uh, on or around the same time, so well, I'm, I I'm really multitasking today. I'm really proud of myself. I I I like to be able to get into the discussion a bit more, so that's why today it's Blue Moon OG. Okay, Blue Moon OG. Really? It's a very, it's a, it's a really. Yeah, it's a funnel filled type joint, and it is uh, mostly in indica. So we have that going for it. <laughs> nice very nice also one of the reasons this, why i have here this is place. that when we first started talking when we first started talking about doing a podcast no right before right before you hit record on our first podcast somewhere before we started recording you said just to let you know steve I'm going to be high through most of these podcasts <laughs> yes <laughs> and so then i said well all right then i guess i will drink well, I, I, I love this podcast. This is like the most fun I have during the week, you know. It's fun. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of fun. Uh, un- unfortunately, I had to cancel, like, I had to cancel Destination Utopia because it was just taking up. Two podcasts was just too much and to do everything yeah. else. So love the show, love the concept, all that. But this is just the most fun I have all week to sit back, kick Yay. back, talk to a friend, get high, and go over a movie. You know, nice, very you know, nice, and and I, I'm really happy the way the both of us fell into like the, our correct roles, you yeah. know, so that we're both enjoying it, we're both getting something out of it, and doing what we want to do. You know, your research is amazing, and I really appreciate all the work that you put into the podcast because then that lets me on the other side work on like, okay, how do I promote this? Yeah. How do I get the word out? How do we get more listeners? You know, things like that. Awesome. I like this podcast. This is a, this is an awesome podcast. I'm 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 proud to be your Ed McMahon, sir. Yay. <laughs> or my Andy Richter, if you're a little bit older. Andy Richter may be a little too hip for me. Really? <laughs> nice. What was that show he had? He had a TV show. Andy Richter had a TV show. I think it was... I don't remember. He had a TV it, show, and it was kind of cute. It might have just been like the Andy Richter show or something like that. Or something like that, yeah. Yeah. I didn't really catch him on Conan at all. Yeah. Well, um, I this week's homework is amazing. It was pretty amazing. It is absolutely amazing. I became aware of this cartoon 
through cracked um dot com big yes. fan of cracked.com it's interesting because like for the when i was growing up there was mad magazine yeah. and then there was cracked magazine and cracked magazine was just the copycat mad magazine oh yeah it was the redheaded stepchild and yeah. it was awful because i would read it from time to time i was really big was. into crack uh mad so then working at a bookstore i I saw, oh, wait a second. They're bringing back Cracked Magazine. How awesome is that? And they rebranded the entire thing to be a men's magazine. Really? It was, it was, yeah, it was like a weird, offensive men's magazine. Oh. And they had these fake posters. I have one in my house, and it's 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 a fake beer poster. Yeah. And and it, it just has, it says beer, and it has, you know, one of those cheesy stock pictures of a guy holding a mug of beer and it says um allowing you to tell normal people from douchebags since 1994 or something like that yeah and they would have uh, articles written by uh, and and short stories written by people like maddox who's kind of big on yeah. the internet and um whoever that guy is who wrote that that asshole book um i hope they serve beer in hell <laughs> and uh he they made a movie based on one of his books anyway it, it, it was a men's magazine it was very yeah. much a men's magazine and it lasted for maybe like a, less than a year until they said okay well we're canceling cracked magazine but we're still going to have a website where we're going to post articles and stuff like that and that was crack.com because one of the parts that i liked about this new crack.com was they would have these bizarre lists like 12 things that people like that are stupid and stuff like like that mm -hmm. so i i when they canceled the magazine i kept going to crack.com in the hopes that they would continue being the and now they've just become a place where they're doing these lists like yeah. the one part that i really really liked to the magazine that's all of crack.com now <laughs> and it's weird mm -hmm. but they had a a list on crack.com yes but now what now wait a second hmm Here's here's kind of my side of the same story. When I yeah. was working at Gateway, I was doing tech support for Gateway for a while before it folded up in this area. And like this was like right after 9-11 and we started slowing down like tons and not getting calls and things like that. So I would go to work and be bored every day and you still had to be, you know, you couldn't like actively start researching things. So I had, yeah. I had Googled, you know, I just need a pointless waste of time. And I found a website called Pointless Waste of Time. <laughs> awesome. So I started reading it. And uh, it had a forum, and I would read through the forums. It was just a fun site. Um, and that was David Wong and John Cheese. Hmm. And then, like... I don't go back there for a while. I had changed jobs, blah, blah, blah. kind of forgot about it, that kind of thing. And I found it in my bookmarks. And I was like, oh, yeah, let me check that out again. And I went to check it out. And it was crack.com. And it was David awesome. Wong and John Cheese. And I was like, huh. how the hell did this happen? <laughs> awesome. Well, they had an article, and it came out in 2012, and it was... Five old children's cartoons way darker than most horror movies. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. And there's a, there's a couple of them. Uh, the, and I immediately went and found all of these cartoons and showed them to my whole family. Oh, send me the rest of them. Um, number, the number four one was The Little Pest. And it's about um, Scrappy. And he's this little, very Mickey Mouse-looking boy. And he goes fishing but his little baby brother wants to go with him yeah and he keeps trying to like get rid of the kid so finally at the end he kills his he kills his uh baby brother yeah he chucks his ba he chucks his baby brother in back into the river and the last thing you hear is hearing the baby drown oh 
Oh. Yeah, it's called uh, the, yeah, The Little Pest, 1931. And then the number three cartoon is kind of hard to find now, but it's a 1950s cartoon from Tom and Jerry called Blue Cat Blues. And it ends with Tom and Jerry both killing themselves. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Because uh, uh, the Tom, the cat, falls in love, and then he 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 uh, gets his heart broken, and so he starts drinking <laughs> like crazy. And then Jerry's like, "Oh, I'll never have that happen to me." And then Jerry gets his heart broken, and so they hug, and they realize that they're not. It, it, they're both really depressed, and they end up sitting on the railroad tracks. And as the the end happens, you just hear a whistle indicating the train is approaching, and then it's kind of over. <laughs> and that's oh. the end. It, basically, they just commit suicide, and that's the end of the cartoon. Oh man! And I am just yeah, picturing, I am just picturing this whole scene of you open an office door, and you look in, and you see the the animator hanging from a noose in the office. <laughs> yeah. And his suicide yeah. note is tucked under the last Tom and Jerry cell. <laughs> yeah. The the Tom and Jerry one used to be on YouTube, but now it's it's become a, a difficult one to track down. But the first one that they mention is Bimbo's Initiation. Yes. Uh, it was done in 1931 uh, by... Fleischer Studios, they they did the Popeye cartoons and uh-huh. they did the Superman cartoons and they were a big rival for Disney at the time. And they had they tried to have their own Mickey Mouse and that was Bimbo the dog. Yes, Bimbo the dog. I I have at least one other Bimbo in in one of the Bob Sturdy shorts director's cut. I forget which one it is, though. I don't, it's not initiation. Yeah. Well, originally, uh, Bimbo first appeared in 1930, and Bimbo's a dog, like I keep saying, and he had a dog girlfriend mm-hmm. named Betty Boop. And eventually, Betty Bimbo became a co-star when Betty Boop took off, and then by 1932, shortly after Bimbo's initiation, she was pretty much the star and so they made Betty Boop the dog a human, but then her boyfriend Bimbo stayed a dog. Yeah. Oddly, it's the Abbott and Costello story, too. Um, was one of them a dog? Uh, toward the end of life, yeah, Abbott. Abbott was, was definitely chasing mailmen. Ah, uh, did not know that. Did not know that about Abbott and Costello. So in 1933, the Motion Picture Production Code, the Hayes Code, was enacted, and that pretty much killed off Bimbo because a dog couldn't date a human because that's bestiality. Yes. Like people are watching a Bimbo cartoon and saying, oh, wow, I'm going to go have sex with a dog now. Mm-hmm. But Betty Boop <laughs> made it look so cool. Exactly. Exactly. I want to meet a woman who can dribble her own ass like <laughs> Eddie Boop does in this cartoon. She's dribbling it like she's a, a famous basketball, I don't know, sports that well. Like Michael Jordan. Yes. She dribbles her own butt. But she did still have the dog ears, which was really freaky. Yes, this was the last cartoon to feature Betty Boop with dog ears. The thing that gets me... And I I go on this rant every time I see anything featuring her face. But how is Betty Boop still popular? Betty Boop has never had her own TV show. There's never been a Betty Boop movie. I mean, Betty Boop really does not exist anymore except being featured on products that a bunch of women buy because for some reason they're obsessed with Betty Boop. And I don't understand why. She's just iconic. You know, she's... The Jessica Rabbit of her day, you know, she is what epitomized sex in that era, Betty Boop. And very, a lot of the cartoons are very sexually awkward. Yes. Because pretty much it's Betty Boop in a different situation evading rape. <laughs> like through the whole fucking cartoon. So 
I, I, I think she's got another good year, you know, like maybe another good 50 or so years ahead of her. I did not think of that uh, whole rape aspect. Oh, yeah, because she just, it, it, her, the cartoons just got more and more sexual. You know, so pretty much it was her trying to retain her virtue in a man's world. It was a different time. Oh yeah, and that's that's what makes it that's what makes it uh, amazing and guilty to watch it at the same time. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you're just watching something that is so out of place now. Yeah, you know, and illegal in, in many cases. I I really I really want to bring back Bimbo's catchphrase. It's a Pippin. <laughs> I really want to bring that back. Because <laughs> he says that at one point in the cartoon, and it's just amazing. That's that's right up there with, um, I don't know, uh, 23 Skidoo or something yeah. like that. A very old catchphrase that has just fallen on the wayside. I really like that. Just, Ooh, it's a Pippin. <laughs> it's a good catchphrase. What, Apparently, the, what was this writer trying to work out? Because this is no just cartoon going on here. Well, I found a website. It's called Vigilant Citizen. Uh -huh. it, it breaks down all of the secret Masonic messages of this cartoon. Oh, awesome. And it, that is 50% absolute conspiracy theory batshit crazy and then 50 percent. okay well maybe you've got a point there because there's so much going on in this cartoon there are so many different weird death traps and symbols and uh, the organization that bimbo stumbles into is called do it or die they wear candles on their yeah. heads oh I but, guess. The, but you know, right now i'm thinking about their faces because they were kind of owl-ish did they mention yeah. Bohemian Grove at all? They're all, yeah, they've got these strange black faces, <laughs> but they're not in blackface. No. Very bizarre. There's a lot of symbols in this thing. Mm hmm. Um, this cartoon, good example of how dark the, the Fleischer cartoons were as opposed to Disney, which is evident in the beginning of the film where literally Mickey Mouse plunges Bimbo into a nightmarish world of sadistic torture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because it's literally Mickey Mouse who comes along and he's like, fuck you, ha ha! <laughs> and plunges Bimbo into a nightmare world of sadistic torture. Mm -hmm. So yes. the dude, the organization, Do It or Die, they ask Bimbo if, if he wants to be a member, and he rejects the membership. Want to so be a member? Keeps, want to be a member? <laughs> so he keeps entering different rooms with different tortures and different near-death experiences, which is why this cartoon is a very good uh, Saw Babies. Yes. Basically. Like <laughs> Muppet Babies, but for Saw. Mm-hmm. It's really amazing. My family loves this cartoon. Oh, okay. <laughs> this 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 gives me an idea for another short movie. Yes. Like you did the Oogie Loves. If anybody hasn't seen the Oogie Loves on a meat hook. <laughs> I'm really proud with with number one, how it finally came out. And number two, how quickly it took me to do. Yeah. So I was, I'm like, oh man, I, I think I have some film software on my computer. I don't have too much experience with it. I guess I could do, oh, look at that. I'm done. <laughs> I, I was quite impressed with the speed at which I was able to do it. Oh, in fact, maybe I'll do it as a, as a, as one of the Bob routines. Hmm. I'll, I'll like superimpose my face over the cartoon and give like a very jigsaw type speech nice <laughs> looking, Hello, bimbo. looking down at bimbo the whole time <laughs> i'd like to play a game yes <laughs> my family loves this cartoon i i 
Maxwell likes going on YouTube, and I don't like having to pick a bunch, like, repeatedly. Oh, you want to watch this? Okay, well, let me try and find it. Let me let me do this. So I keep making these big playlists for him. Yeah. Different cartoons and stuff. And I will switch it around. I'll move this one to the back. I'll move this one to the front. I'll add something, and I'll take stuff off. And I, I'm not exactly sure how, because I don't think I consciously... Do you like comic books? Um. Me too! Do you listen to podcasts? Are you still talking to me? Cool! I have one called the Comic Book Update. So? I do weekly reviews of story arcs, comic miniseries, ongoing titles, and more! I don't care. I know, right? So all you have to do is go to the website at comicbookupdate.com. Why would I do that? We post daily previews of new comic books every day. Ugh, someone save me. And every weekend is Cosplay Sunday, with blog posts featuring cosplayers from around the world. Excuse me, miss, is this guy bothering you? Back off, buddy. She's with me. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, sorry. Nerd rage. Oh, yeah. So check out the comic book update at comicbookupdate.com, as well as on iTunes, and stream it live on Stitcher. The comic book update, the antidote for nerd rage. Okay, we are back. (laughs) I'll I'll put a break in there. (laughs) Oh, that's good thinking. That's good thinking. So Maxwell, Maxwell has this cartoon or this week's homework on his playlist. And every once in a while, just randomly, Maxwell will just come to me and just go, hey, daddy, hey, daddy, daddy, I have a question. I have a question. <laughs> then I go, OK, what's your question? And he just. Want to be a member? Want to be a member? <laughs> and then if I say yes, he'll get all ex- angry. Daddy, the answer is no. You're supposed to say no, and then I'd try and stab you. But that's how the Scientologists do it, isn't it? That's, that's pretty much exactly how Scientology works. They just walk up to people, want to be a member, want to be a member. <laughs> yeah. And this is one my absolute favorite uh, cartoon of all time. I love this cartoon so much. If if the Church of Ed Wood ever starts doing the door knocking thing, that's gonna have to be the open line. <laughs> yeah, just just stand. Want to be a member? <laughs> yeah, just knock on random. Don't even introduce yourself. Don't even tell you tell them what church you're from. Just knock on the door, and when the door opens, just look at them. Want to be a member? Want to be a member? <laughs> And then have some sort of weird candle on a stick, bell ringing thing. Uh-huh. Not sure what they were holding, but it, I like the fact that I picked this as homework because I'd much rather talk about Bimbo's initiation than God's <laughs> Not Dead. Um, this week's movie is God's Not Dead, the winner of the GMA Dove Award and the 2015 Steve Don't Give a Shit Award, <laughs> yes. which is give which is given out uh, once a year for a film that Steve don't give a shit about. I don't know what the GMA Dove Award is. I'm assuming that it's it has something to do with soap or possibly chocolate covered uh, ice cream bars. Mm. The title should have been for this movie. The title should have been God's Not Dead. He's resting. He's resting. <laughs> because I haven't seen the movie up until this point, but before up uh, this point, any time that I. Ha- heard someone talking about God's Not Dead or or saw someone with a God's Not Dead t-shirt or I had to shelve the book God's Not Dead because I we have the book God's Not Dead. I always <laughs> thought of Monty Python. That was the first thing I always thought was God's Not Dead. He, he's resting. Beautiful, beautiful savior, the Lord, isn't he? Beautiful plumage. Well, well, what that what that reminds me of is God exists two falls to a submission. <laughs> nice. Um, that's that's good. That's good. 
Fucking God's not dead. Okay. I, I had a very hard time with this week's movie. Uh, Maxwell, there you are. I was hoping that you would come in. Hey, come over here. I'm doing my podcast, okay? And you know what we were just talking about? Here, sit. Sit right here. Sit right here. Sit right here next to me. You know what we were just talking about? We were just talking about a bimbo. Bimbo? Yeah. I love bimbo. You love bimbo? Yeah. What do those guys say to bimbo? What do they say? They say that. No, they don't say that. They say, want to be a member? Want to be a member? Can you oh. say that? You want to be a member? You want to be a member? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like bimbo, don't you? Let me say something else. Oh, you need to say something else to the podcast? What do you have to say? Um, say something. Say, say something. What do you like? I like. But I can't lie. You like bimbo, I can't lie. Is that what you said? Yeah. All right, then. Thank you for that. Um, I'd much rather hear you talk about bimbo than have to talk about God's Not Dead. <laughs> uh, I had a hard time with this week's movie because uh, talking about this movie, I feel like I there's no way about there's no way that I can talk about this movie without talking about organized religion and Christianity right. and the Bible and all of those things are the number one way to piss me off mm -hmm. is having to talk about any of those things. So I'm going to try and stay focused, talk about the movie, but there's a possibility that I might get very angry <sighs> and go on a bunch of angry rants, a bunch of angry asides and then asides within asides. Um, yeah, you know, but you know, but you know, if the host of the show gets to a point where they have a complete nervous breakdown on, I do you have any idea the ratings I could probably generate with that? Yeah, oh. yeah, I yeah. I have one whole page here <laughs> on my problems. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay. What do you have to say, Maxwell? What do you have to say to the podcast? You're, that's not really saying anything. And also, they can't see you when you fall down. <laughs> just they, they only hear us. They don't see us. So they're just hearing us. So you need to talk and not just go and then fall because they can't see you do that. Um, podcast. Come over here and, and talk around here. Talk to the podcast. Do you like the podcast? I have podcast. I love you. <laughs> okay, that was very sweet. You professing your love to the podcast. <laughs> but the podcast just likes you as a friend, okay? The podcast is friend zoning you. Or or like a grandchild or something like yeah. that. I, 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 I could I, I really kinda wanna grab him by his cheek and just kinda twist it some. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want? He just pinched his own cheek and uh, sh he's shaking his head. Very sweet. God's Not Dead is a 2014 Christian drama that is trying very hard to be indie with finger quotes. Yes. It's it's a very cheaply made movie but it's trying very hard to see itself as an indie drama Ow. yes a very heavy-handed stereotypical <sighs> yeah <laughs> yeah um it, it, it stars kevin sorbo and dean kane as the bad guys but the film really stars shane harper mm -hmm. who plays josh the college student who constantly has his mouth hanging open yes he is, he is an actor who plays the hunky boyfriend on the TV show Good Luck Charlie that plays on the Disney Channel. Uh -huh. When I was growing up, the Disney Channel would show classic Disney cartoons and classic Disney animated movies, and it was a wonderful channel. Now the Disney Channel seems to be uh, filled with live-action sitcoms for kids, which are really, really stupid. I really hate they have a show on the Disney Channel right now called Dog with a Blog. I love that. 
No, you do not. You are not allowed to like dog with a blog, Bella. You will be grounded, okay? You need to get a piece of paper and write dog with a blog is dead on it and then hand it to me. And if not, you are going to fail this class. You know what class I'm talking about? I'm talking about life. Never. Never. Dog with a blog. It's about a dog that talks and he has a blog where he talks about his family. And it's horrible. Another Disney live action sitcom that I hate that my kids love is Jesse. I so, love Jesse. I know you love Jesse. It's a stupid show. It's a stupid show. I hate the girl who plays Jesse. She's just stupid. Shut up. Good luck Charlie was a kind of okay in the last in the last season before they got before they canceled it. There was an episode where they had new neighbors and they were gay. And so, so they had a hard time dealing with the fact that their neighbors were gay, but eventually they learned that they're just normal people too. And that a lot of people took familiar. offense to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of people took offense yeah. to it that the Disney Channel would have a show that dealt Family with guy. the with gay people being normal. Family guy. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure if Shane Harper was even in that episode. I wouldn't be surprised if he bowed out because he's so Christian. <laughs> But I, I found myself for for whatever reason. Like and I, on two and a half men went all kind of Christian and mental. Yes, yes, exactly like that. Shane Harper, Josh is like a college student. He seems to be. They don't fully say where he's from, but they really do. It really does seem as if he's just a slack jawed yokel. From some small farming town somewhere. Okay, since you, I, I don't know what made me think of this. But yes. we need to do a little bit of an aside. Okay. You don't mind yes. an aside from a... No. God's, God's not dead. No. Iceman. Well, here's, here's, here's the thing about... Uh, Maxwell, did you hurt yourself? Maxwell. That's what you get for doing lucha on... Uh, well, it... Ice Man. Here's the thing: uh -huh. is that it's Ice Man, and it's the original Ice Man, but it's not the Ice Man. Oh, you because kidding? It's an all comic book, yeah. it, Well, it, it's like the Green Lantern all over again because they said that the Green Lantern was coming out as gay, but oh yeah, it was an alternate universe Green Lantern. It wasn't the real Green Lantern, so it's like, there. DC Comics was just trying to get press for being yeah. But it they it really did nothing. This is kind of like that because right now there are the X Men and the X Men have kind of broken up a little bit because Colossus, uh, no Cyclops, he got the Phoenix power that Jean Grey had and okay. kind of went nuts and killed Professor X. Well, I just kind of love the idea of the whole Geek Nation. For only about a day, because the, the news came out the first day, and then we found out who it was yesterday. But I just like the whole idea of of the whole geek nation just sitting back trying to figure out which one of the X Men is gay. Yeah, yeah. And when the when the first story came out, I forget one of my friends had posted the, posted the story, and m my comment on that was was. Is there wagering on this thread? Because I'll put five bucks on Iceman. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Why would you put your money on him, though? Uh, because in any of my experiences reading any of the comics with Iceman or even Spider-Man and Friends, um, he never seemed to have a girlfriend. He sort of had a, had a thing with Rogue in the movies. I don't think yeah. he really did that in the comic books. <laughs> I, I always have seen him as a standoff character where you can easily shift him into into another another type of relationship. Maxwell has something that he has to say, so uh, hold on. Maxwell? What do you have to say, Maxwell? Spider-Man web he, he webbed the longest. Yeah. He did. And here comes the dad. Godzilla! Godzilla? Yeah. Oh, thank you for sharing that with us, Maxwell. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's amazing. 
Um, but the thing is, is that, okay, so Cyclops kills Professor X. Yeah. And so he he's like a kind of a, a bad guy rebel sort of person right now. And so Beast comes up with this bizarre idea to try and snap Cyclops out of it. So he goes back in time and gets the original very young X-Men mm-hmm. from like the, the first year that they were ever the X-Men and takes them to the present to confront Cyclops. But once they see their own future, they realize that they don't want to go back to the past that they had. So right now there are two Cyclopses, there are two angels, there are two beasts, and there's two Icemen. There's uh-huh. two There's two Bobby Drakes. There's the Bobby Drake who's been alive for a really long time and he's kind of a, a leader and he's been he's been through a lot. And there's also Bobby Drake who's only been a superhero for about a year and he's from the 50s or 60s and he's the one who's coming out as gay. Uh-huh. So it's the original Iceman, but it's not the Iceman who's coming out as gay. Yeah. And Marvel Marvel already tested the waters with as far as I understand no big deal when when North Star got married. But yes. like that's kind of how you do it. If you're going to do something controversial like that, you might as well do it in one of your lamest books. Yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So it's a it's all a bit confusing, but yeah, I I, I don't I don't I don't get it myself. Yeah. Yeah. I I find I really don't care when it, when it's characters I don't give a shit about. Yes. You know, I I don't care about a Black Johnny Storm. I I don't care about that at all. I don't I don't care about a Black Nick Fury and frankly, if you can get fucking a uh, Samuel Jackson in anything, that's a score. <laughs> yes. You know. I agree with that. I, I there's been talk about there's been talk about uh, Adris Elba playing James Bond. I don't really much care about that either. So we we're, we would have to find out where m- my heart lies if you start trying that with a character I give a shit about, like Captain Kirk or something like that. Yeah, Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk. I really liked that first uh, Star Trek reboot that they did. The first movie was good. I wasn't too happy with the second, and I've had no yeah. interest in revisiting it. Yeah, I saw it when it came out, and then afterwards, I like I don't think I've seen it since then. <laughs> I, I yeah, I have I have had no interest in it. Yeah, it felt yeah. it felt too jumbled. Yes, very much so. Despite the fact that it got Cumberbatched. Yes. Yes. There's this one video. Cumberbatched. There's this one video on YouTube that my wife loves, and it's a small little clip from a documentary, a nature documentary that was narrated by Benedict Cumberbatch. And the 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 small little clip, it's like less than a minute, but it features all of the times in the documentary where Benedict Cumberbatch said the word penguins. Yes. And apparently he just can't pronounce it. <laughs> he just can't properly pronounce the word penguins. And so every time it, I showed it to my wife and she just, she just, she almost died. One of those laughs where you almost die. Cause you can't stop laughing your face gets all red and you need to breathe. Yeah. Uh-huh. She almost it, Benedict Cumberbatch almost killed my wife. <laughs> Which was weird because then he got hired to be one of the characters in the movie Penguins of Madagascar. And yeah, in that movie he keeps messing up. Like, Listen up, penguins. <laughs> And it's like I wonder if they hired him for Penguins of Madagascar specifically because he can't pronounce this. Oh, I would bet you anything. And and if that's true, then that's awesome. <laughs> but the 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 big but, problem- okay. But but turn that around now and just think about being yeah. being Cumberbatch and just being like, okay, you're gonna pay me because I don't know how to pronounce a certain <laughs> word. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> sure, I have no problem with that. Slide that check over. <laughs> right. So uh, God's not dead. So God's the main, not dead. 
the main problem with God's Not Dead um, is that like a bunch of other artsy indie with finger quote mm-hmm. dramas, uh, this movie has one main story and a number of other less important and not well-written subplots yes. that are just weaving through the entire film, like Magnolia, right? Uh, oh, Crash, oh, yeah. Paul Haggis, and not the the Cronenberg. Right. It, it's almost like an anthology movie with with a with a wraparound. You know, they just give more interweaving to the wraparound. You know. Hey guys, real important information here. Um, I'm disarming a fucking bomb right now, but while I do that, please, please, go listen to The Pope on Film. Find us in iTunes by searching for Undead Cow. Um, and yeah, Stitcher, it's on fucking Stitcher too, okay? I've got shit to worry about. Goodbye. Uh, another movie that has uh, subplots weaving in and out of each other, uh, Traffic. I kind of liked that movie. Traffic. Remember? I've not seen Traffic yet. It's, I haven't it's, seen it in the longest time, but it's it's a pretty good movie. It's a list of shame movie. I've got to watch that one one day. Yeah, yeah. Oh Magno- man, there was so much. There was so much. Go ahead. Magnolia was made during Tom Cruise's good phase. I Unless- really liked Magnolias. Allegedly, Tom Cruise was doing really good in Scientology, and he'd been a Scientologist for a really long time. But finally, he reached that upper pinnacle where they tell you about the 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 truth and yeah. the Grand Overlord Xenu and alien souls and all of that crap. And Tom Cruise just said, "What the fuck?" And then he left Scientology secretly for a while. And during that period in time when he wasn't a Scientologist, he made a bunch of movies that he would never do when he was a Scientologist. One of them was um, uh, Interview with the Vampire, and the other one was Magnolia. Huh, okay. And uh, so he had Stacey really Jackson kids. Magnolia. Yeah, he did a he did a he had a really good phase there where he was making non Scientology movies, and then he went back, and now we've got the Tom Cruise now. But this film really does seem this whole interweaving plot thing. It, it really does seem like this movie is trying way too hard to be an indie art film. Like this movie is just Pulp Fiction, the Bible edition. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, did you like Pulp Fiction? Did you like? The part where Samuel Jackson mentioned a Bible quote. How about we just do a movie of that? <laughs> so we had the main plot line. We had the Muslim plot, plot line. We had the Asian plot line. And what the hell was the Dean Kane? Okay. I am suspecting that this is a conspiracy. We are disconnected again. Somebody is trying to stop us from discussing God's Not Dead. (sighs) Ladies and gentlemen, this may be the work of the gray aliens. I am afraid that this may be the beginning of the end of our civilization. Hold on one second, Rev. I'm telling them about the end of the civilization. That's awesome. Okay. Wait, Wait, we're connected again. Yes, we I, are. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a conspiracy here that somebody no, I, is trying to stop us from talking about God's not dead. No, I know, I know, I know what's wrong with, with, with this. If we have. I've recently learned that. See, I like doing my podcast in my bedroom. Okay. And, and I, I sit there on my bed and I, I put everything there, and and it's it's a very comfortable spot for me, but it's kind of far away from the internet, uh, the router and whatever, so now I'm doing it in my uh, oldest daughter's room, and when she realizes that, she might have a little bit of a shit fit. Just letting you know that eventually a tall blonde girl is going to like bash into the podcast and speaking Um, of tall blonde girls okay yes i think every girl i think you need to sit emerald down and have her watch the dean kane dinner scene 
the Dean Cain, uh, the scene where uh, the where the girlfriend uh, announces that she has cancer. Yes. Yeah. And he lets it be clearly known to her that she just fucked up his night. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't wait until later. <laughs> yeah. That was a great scene. That was I I I don't think I have ever seen a more brilliant asshole Did in I the face you? of the world. Hello? No, can you not hear me? Ta-ta-ta. Yeah, no, it it just there was it there was a little hiccup, but uh-huh. now I I gotcha. Okay, he was he was just perfectly dickish, and I always kind of wonder when somebody is just like that big of a dick, are they really just probably dicks in real life? Many people. So I I see you're a fan. Of this podcast. That's good. Um, listen, um, how about sometime, uh, you, you know, if it's cool, if it's cool, you know, if you want to come over and, and check out uh, a great new, it's really good, new podcast. Uh, it's called The Pope on Film. Um, I, I, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I, I, I enjoy it. Um, and, and I believe you will, too. I, I really do. So come on over. It, Every day, Pope on film. Uh, find us on iTunes. Uh, search Undead Cow. It, it's great. It's great. Um, uh, we're, we're also on Stitcher. Um, Stitcher, if, if you didn't hear, um, yeah, Stitcher. Uh, so, uh, I, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, take care. Bye. We lost him again. If this keeps happening, I'm going to have to try a very dark and ancient incantation to try to restore the evil to its ancient lair. (sighs) All the forces of evil are gathering around this podcast at this time. It's obvious why this podcast keeps... Are you just now No, I'm not just now recording. It it keeps getting dropped. And you know why the, the, the podcast keeps getting dropped? Because of you, Bella. It's all your fault. (laughs) <laughs> no, it is all your fault because you don't believe in Jesus. No, I believe in Jesus. You don't believe in the cupcake. We're not talking. Jesus. I don't believe in cupcake Jesus. Is that <laughs> I do not believe in cupcake Jesus. So that's why you're yelling at me. Number one, why are you yelling at me? And number two, what is cupcake Jesus? Cupcake Jesus is the same as our Jesus, except a cupcake. Oh, Cupcake Jesus is the same as our Jesus, but he's a cupcake. Ah, okay. I did not know this. I did not know this. um, That's why he's so yummy? No, that's because you don't. Can you guys stop dropping those? Okay. So, okay, I would like to take this time to say that this podcast, I keep getting dropped from the podcast, but it's because of my crappy internet and not because of God. (laughs) <laughs> I, I i feel the i feel the forces of evil gathering that's all i can say no it's like that it's like the preacher and the car that's what this is all, that's what this is right here yeah that's what this whole thing is um so so interweaving plots god's not dead it, all of the subplots that are going on throughout this entire movie they share two things number one all of them end up at a christian rock concert we'll talk about that later <laughs> And number two, all of the plot points share the belief that only Christians are good and everyone else is bad. Yes, exactly. Exactly. There are a lot of there are there are also a lot of stereotypes in this movie. There are so there are so many stereotypes in this movie that I was kind of happy that there weren't any Mexicans in this. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. I was like, I could like I'm watching the movie and I close my eyes and I could picture the Mexicans that they would that they would sh- like La Cucaracha would be playing in a kitchen where there are 35 Mexicans that are cooking a big dinner together. Sombreros and ponchos. Yeah, yes. like really, really bad. Really, really bad. Bella, stop hurting your brother, okay? Guys, stop fighting with each other. I'm trying to do this podcast. Yeah, we should it probably hurts. take it thread by thread, and we already did the thread with the two priests. Yes. But this, seriously, this is, the Muslims. I got to talk about the Muslims. That, that was that was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. It was a, a very offensive, a very offensive sort of a, a way to take this thing. We're introduced to them as the father 
who is a very burly kind of dark Muslim man and his daughter who is wearing a burqa. And since we're seeing the school scene, we assume that she, he's driving her to school. And if we do not glom onto the fact that they are Muslim, they must speak in Arabic for the first for the first opening scene. Yeah. Now, in typical fashion, the first thing that really pissed me off, if that wasn't enough to piss me off, but as soon as the girl's out, out of the car, she's got to take the burqa off. And that is so just... That that barely has anything to do with religion at all, you know. Yeah. A, a lot of Muslim women like wearing the burqa. It's very similar to the way Scotsmen like to wear kilts. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything very much. Uh, it's also similar to the way a lot of Mexican men like to wear wife beaters. Yes. Mm -hmm. And fifty pounds of hairspray. Um. Don't have too much experience with the hairspray, but I'll, I'll take your word on that one. Okay. <laughs> the thing that really upset me about the Muslim uh, part of, of the movie is the fact that so she takes off the burqa when she's at college, and then she quickly, like, hides behind a tree and yes. then puts it back on. Yeah. But then immediately after she puts it on, her dad appears in a car right in front of her, it's what? you're hiding on the wrong side of the tree. Do you think if you want your dad not to see that you're putting the burqa back on? She's just really bad at hiding yeah. this whole thing. Number one and number two, like you could absolutely hair. see her hair I don't like <laughs> peeking out of the thing while she's she's even bad at putting a burqa on. Yes. Yes. She's really, really bad at this. Do you think the burqa gave her superpowers, though? Superpowers? How so? Uh, well, just for that. Well, or, 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 or was it was it like a kind of a superpowering, dampening field of some sort? That's that is a good possibility. You know, where she couldn't wear the burqa, so she get can have the power to get through the day of school, and then put the burqa back on. That is a possibility. Yeah. It, the, this film, this film was decimated by critics. Obviously, the film has a score of sixteen out of a hundred on Metacritic. I've never been to Metacritic. I really don't know what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But apparently, sixteen out of a hundred is bad. I have not heard of it, it at all. No. It also currently has a seventeen percent on Rotten Tomatoes. That one I do know. Yes. And that's pretty bad. But I have some of my favorite um, bits from reviews of the movie. I've got some really good uh, uh, quotes from the reviews of this film. No. Really anyway, anyway, I'm sorry. But anyway, somehow she finds her way to Jesus and starts listening to the spoken word Bible on her phone. Oh, my God. And then she's found out because the brother, for no reason whatsoever, decides to try and take. I don't think it was a phone. I think it was a really old iPod. Possibly. And it's like, why if it, I was so confused and upset by this, it, you have no prior knowledge or interest. Why are you stealing her iPod to see if she's listening to a Christian sermon? Yes. Uh -huh. Like, there's no reasoning behind that. And, of course, the father finds out about this and goes berserk and abuses the daughter. Yeah, there's a there's a Muslim dad beating her daughter montage almost uh -huh. in this movie while there's a beautiful song playing while the evil Muslim dad beats the shit out of her daughter. That is really bad. Well, the the under music like was really was great bad, in spots. Oh yeah, and then throws her out of the house. Yeah, and you then know, we we, we we so have to get over this in this country. We are Americans. We are all pretty much the same. <laughs> you know, yeah. if that was true in any way, even if these Muslims were, you know, on the religious side. Uh, I think most m normal Muslim fathers would be like, eh, you know, she's not on drugs and she's not getting anal, <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
Let her, let her, let her, let her read the Bible and, and go to a Christian church for a little while. She'll get over that shit. I, I really like the fact that a lot of the reviews of this movie do specifically say, even if it's like a, like a Christian website or a Christian newspaper or a Christian magazine. Seriously, internet connection problems. I'm still here. Hello. Hello. No. Hello. I got you. Okay. Damn it. Okay. Um, I like the fact that a lot of when I was looking for reviews of this movie, that even the reviews from Christian websites that loved the movie took the time to say, okay, yeah, this is a wonderful movie and it shows that God is real and God exists. Okay, yeah, the Muslim thing's a bit harsh. I really like that, that even the people that were like, this is a wonderful movie. The Muslim part, it's iffy, but this is a great movie. <laughs> I really like that. So I've got some I've got some good reviews here. I, I really, really like these. OK, um, the USA Today said the contrived premise is anything but credible. Yes. Like that. The Portland Mercury called it comically awful. Mm -hmm. The Onion AV Club, which I really love, they said, even by the rather lax standards of the Christian film industry, God's Not Dead is a disaster. Yes. That's really, really good. Variety, and this is the one that, that I really thought of, um, Variety called it a ham-fisted melodrama. Now, this is my idea. This is my idea. I want to yeah. do a movie about a couple that's breaking up maybe a marriage that's that's coming apart but they the both the man and the woman have giant hands hams for hands i want to literally do a ham-fisted melodrama <laughs> okay 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 how about how about the ham-fisted version of turn of the screw because that's public domain the burning the burning! The fucking burning! Uh, the pop-up film! Oh, Jesus! Jesus Christ! You, you listen to this? You like this show? I hear the screams! I hear them! I can hear the screams! Come on over to the pop up film! Why? Why? Find us in the iTunes stores! A searching undead cow! My eyes! My eyes! My eyes! Go oh, on, Phil! <laughs> My toenails! My toenails! Hello? It, it, it's me. It's targeted at me specifically because every time it cuts out, that has been just the funniest line. It's been like it the killer joke been. that would be weaponized. And it cuts I test out. It out. I tested out this ham fisted idea that I have, and it's a damn good idea. Yeah, I, what do you I, got? Huh? What you did you hear? Did you hear my thing? No, no. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. Kids, kids, kids. Um, so Variety called the movie a ham-fisted melodrama. So I want to do a short scene about a couple breaking up, but they literally have hams for hands. I want to literally do a ham-fisted melodrama. I know the piece to do. I know the piece to do, and, and I might I, make this. I might make this homework. There yeah, I want to make. I want to. I specifically want a line in the movie where the the woman says, "Wipe away my tears," and the man says, "I can't. I have hams for hands." <laughs> there is this short film that is only like two, three, maybe five minutes long, and. I was like totally impressed with it, but I still don't know who this movie was made for. And yeah. it was a, a young skinhead in his apartment and his girlfriend comes over and has to tell him that she just found out she's half Jewish. And he erupts <laughs> in a beautifully clat, you know, like, it, like how you kind of picture a skinhead would fly into a rage. That's exactly what he did. It, it was the Muslim scene. Very nice. Let's do that with people with hams. <laughs> that would be nice. A literal and we ham could melodrama. And and we could tweak the dialogue, you know. 
Yeah, there'd be no problem with that. It's yeah. a good idea. <laughs> so, so most of these reviews are from kind of evil, liberal websites and stuff like that. So I've, I've got three reviews okay. from religious organizations, yes. and I love what they have to say. The Catholic News Service called God's Not Dead a largely unrealistic picture. <laughs> yes. And I like that. Uh, Beliefnet dot com called the film clumsy it, it tells too many stories and it called the muslim plot a direct sucker punch yes it was oh and this one is my favorite creation.com okay it's a website specifically on how jesus how god created the heavens and the earth and how evolution is a lie they said we regrettably cannot recommend this movie. <laughs> and oh man, man, that's so wonderful because you know that they want to so oh, bad. Burn. But they absolutely cannot. But the thing is, this film did huge at the box office. Yes. This goddamn movie did well, huge. Just like Passion of the Christ made all that money. Hey, we'll get like the mystic pizza people made all that money. Yeah, the mystic pizza people. That would be a great name for a cult. <laughs> yes, the mystic yes. pizza people. And sorry, it was the memories pizza people. So I miss. Uh, I, I, I still it. like mystic pizza people. Yeah. Mystic pizza people. Though, though that sounds real. That's money right there. <laughs> so God's Not Dead opened at number five in the box office, and then it stayed there for a really long time. Yeah, the film cost two million dollars to make, and it had a worldwide gross of sixty-two million. Oh. And it is right up there with the Grand Budapest Hotel for the biggest independent movie of two thousand fourteen. Nice money. So how did it do that? I've got a theory, and I call shenanigans on this whole goddamn thing. Okay. Number one, the movie really did ride the persecution money train. As a lot of Christians are doing right now, they specifically just went, oh, well, you know, people won't want you to see this movie yeah. because Christians are being persecuted. So we need to all go to the movies and see this film. We need to send a message to the evil liberals in Hollywood, blah, 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 mm -hmm. that sort of a thing. And also the, the movie pre-sold group tickets to churches and church groups so essentially every church group youth group bible study they all went in mass to see this movie and then went again and again and again so i really do think that this the the box office grosses for this movie should have like an asterisk yes you know in in the same way that like Barry Bonds breaking like a like a home run record has kind of an asterisk because he was all hopped up on drugs right. and steroids at the time. This movie was seen repeatedly by people <laughs> who specifically tried to I call shenanigans on this whole thing. Yes. I call bullshit. And I'm, I, I think that a lot of people do, too, because most websites don't list God's Not Dead in their lists of biggest independent films of 2014. I find that to be interesting. So I, I find that it to be interesting and a little unfair, frankly. You should list everything. Yeah, yeah. You know? most, most, most of the most of the uh, the websites that I went to listed the biggest independent film of the year as God's Not Dead because it made fifty eight million dollars, and that's such a big number. And it's like, wait a second, if God's Not Dead made sixty two million in two thousand fourteen, how come that is not in any way on your list? So then I'd go to Christian websites and they'd say, oh, God's Not Dead made sixty two million. That's the biggest independent film of the year. So wait a second, as much as I hate to admit it right how come you guys are being unfair to god's not dead right exactly hey them they made their money you know what, what are you gonna say they may have done it by hook or by crook but they still made that made a good chunk of change on that movie you know they and, did. and regardless of the rest of the movie they gotta get they gotta get their props for that they're they're currently at work on the sequel oh Unfortunately, I think it's going to be called God's Not Dead 2. 
personally, oh, I would have yeah. liked for them to have called it God's Still, still not, not Dead. dead yeah. yeah, that would have been a better name. Mm -hmm. God is Still Not Dead. But um, I have a list. Okay. And it's a bit of a weird list, and we'll need to talk about it. Okay. But I have a list. I, uh, Box Office Mojo has a list, and it's the list of the highest grossing Christian films of all time. And I'm a bit confused about the list, so let's go over it. I've got the top 10 just, highest grossing. Just got to break out a little more blue moon for this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So number one is Passion of the Christ. Mm -hmm. Passion of the Christ, yeah. Mel Gibson. So is, here's, here's my question. This is the way that I feel, but a, my wife disagreed. It, it's a bit confusing, but my theory is, well, here's the question. Here's the question. Okay. Does the director's drunken racist rant cast, cancel out the message of the film? Uh, no, no, I, I don't feel that way. Um, you know, there are some directors that I feel deserve justice to be served, and I'm looking at you, Roman Polanski. Right. He's also he's also a genius filmmaker. Not totally always to my taste, but I'm not going to shun a Roman Polanski movie just because he deserves to be in jail. But if right before the uh, supposed rape, he made a beautiful movie that everyone loved that was also about how 12-year-olds should have sex with older men, and then he went and did this horrible thing, would yeah. that cancel out the message? Because I really do feel that Passion of the Christ is just this movie about how Jesus suffered at the hands of the Jews, and Jesus is so amazing. Isn't this amazing? And then immediately after that, Mel Gibson's like, fucking Jews, I hate Jews. I'm drunk. I'm Mel Gibson. But doesn't that kind of cancel out your whole movie about how Jesus is great because of the because of the punishment at the hands of the Jews. No, because no feeling about the Jews. Does that cancel out? Or is this just me wanting to, uh, Mel Gibson to go down? I, see, for me, I kind of feel like, well, first off, okay, that's how the Jews in the Passion of the Christ just were. Okay? That's yeah. biblically accurate, and that's what he was trying to do. You know, we're... Uh, it, it's telling the story of Christ, and this is this is the Jewish role in that story. You don't like it? I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> frankly, not big on the movie anyway. But now, at the same time, now you have Mel Gibson's ass being ridden about the Jews, and they're dragging his senile father in it for shit. You know, and then he winds up getting hammered one day. Gets pulled over. Somebody says the wrong thing to him, and he just flies off the fucking handle. And, yeah, yeah. and sh no, he shouldn't have done it. But damn it, I could see it happening. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it's not that unreasonable of a thing. I just fucking hate Mel Gibson. <laughs> There's also the fact that there really and that's is fine, man, because he should have been able to get on his feet over this, and he he just hasn't been able to. There's also the fact that there is no message to the Passion of the Christ. No, no, it's just there, a gore flick. There's no and a message damn good one of how wonderful he is. They don't focus on what Jesus did or what Jesus said. They literally, the whole film is literally just gore for gore's sake. It's just the Stations of the Cross, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's, it's, it's overly gory. They're using fear to try and convince you into believing. It's basically like a movie version of a hell house. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Or the ninety nine. Do you know what the ninety nine is? Ah, uh, we may have even discussed it, but I, I don't have it in my head anymore. Because a the out of nowhere, I, I I kept in Oklahoma. Suddenly, I saw this big giant tent around uh, Halloween in a parking lot, and it just yeah. said the ninety nine all over it. And I'm like, what the hell is this? So finally, someone came up to me. It's like, oh, let me tell you what the 99 is. Okay, so they, they make it seem as if it's a haunted house 
for Halloween, but really it's all about how everyone is evil and needs to follow Jesus. And it's really violently graphic and they use (laughs) a lot of money to try and scare you into seeing drug addicts and people dead and people dying and how great Jesus is. And then at the end, a bunch of people just just bum rush you and talk <laughs> and and there are counselors right at the end who specifically are designed to tell you about how you need to follow Jesus right now. Uh-huh. Okay. It's a it, there's a website what is the 99.com. It's really it's 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 I really want to go one of these days and just do like a like a, a Kingsman the yes. secret service there's a specific scene in the Kingsman where this British Secret Service ish agent is at a really racist church in the South. Yeah. And they're talking about how evil Jews and Mexicans and blacks are. And so he tries to leave the church and someone says, where are you going? And he goes on this wonderful rant and he's like, well, I'm gay and my gay husband and I are going to have sodomy (laughs) and we're married and we have kids. And he just goes on this amazing rant. And I want to go to the 99 one of these days, just do that scene, that that monologue verbatim to one of the people at the end. It's going to be wonderful. So anyway, Passion of the Christ, number one, obviously. Okay, yes. Number two, three, and four are Narnia movies. Number two is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Number three is Prince Caspian. And number four is Voyage of the Dawn Trader. I, I didn't know they came out with a third. I, neither do I, but uh, here's my thing. Do these movies count as Christian films? I know that C.S. Lewis was Christian, but Disney made these movies for Christ's sake. I don't think that Disney made The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe to promote freaking Jesus. Yeah, so no. These, I, these I, films count. I, I just feel if, if Christians want it to count, let them have it count. I don't yeah. care. Okay. Well, they want they it wanna, to They want to claim the lion so they can have the lion. I don't yeah. care. Okay. So I don't, the care next- what, I don't care what they do. <laughs> yeah. The number five highest grossing Christian film is Heaven is for Real. I and, don't think um, I've even heard of that one. It, it, it starred Greg Kinnear, and it's based on a book, which is allegedly based on a true story. And it's about this kid, a uh, three-year-old kid who died and went to heaven. And let me tell you, it's total bullshit. Okay. There's a trend now in books. A, of people who have died and gone to heaven. And I tell you, it's totally 100% true. And let me get a book deal out of it and sell you a whole bunch of things. It's called, uh, and this is what the media has given the, these books, uh, Heaven Tourism. Heaven Tourism, okay. It's so popular that Barnes & Noble, a bookstore of which I am in no way representative of, nor nor will I admit that I work there on this podcast right. because I do not, right. according is what I'm saying. But they now have a visiting heaven section. Okay. There yeah. are so many books out there of people dying and going to heaven that there's a section for it now. There's also a section for Amish fiction. Amish is, fiction, okay. Yes, Amish romance novels are really big right now. Wow. But there's there's a heaven tourism section. The whole thing is absolutely bullshit, especially heaven is for real because a three year old had a had like a sickness and then died. And then he came back to life and started telling everybody about how he went to heaven. But the kid is the son of a pastor and goes Mm -hmm. to church every like three times a week. So, of course, when he dies, right, he's going to come back to life and tell these magical stories about heaven. It's really the whole thing just really upsets me, really upsets me, especially how the kid says that um, uh, God has uh, white skin and blue eyes uh-huh. and he rides a horse made of rainbows. OK, yeah, it that sounds 100 percent true and not just the delusional ramblings of a three-year-old except for the hair it sounded like you know kind of like doug henning (laughs) the wonderful world of magic Magic. 
Yes. The number <laughs> six. The number six movie is God's Not Dead. Okay. This movie. Number seven is Son of God, which is weird because it's just. Oh, a that's, big- a, that's a Jared Leto knockoff kid. No, it, it 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 was a big screen movie version of the TV miniseries, and it got a lot of press because people were saying, "Did they make Jesus too sexy?" Yeah, women wanted to bone Jesus. Yeah, women yeah, yeah. wanted to bone Jesus. Number eight is the movie Soul Surfer, which is a touching true story of Bethany Hamilton. A surfer who got her arm bitten off by a shark, but somehow through the magic of Jesus, still stayed pretty. (laughs) Really, this is like a non-story. The only story is the fact that a a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, pretty white chick got her arm bitten off by a shark, but still believes in Jesus. There's like no story there. (laughs) If she was a Mexican or black, but whatever. Bethany Hamilton got her arm bitten off by a shark. Good for her. All right. Number number nine is the nativity story. I didn't even know this existed. It's a 2006 film directed by the chick who did twilight. Okay. Uh, Catherine Hardwick. (laughs) And it's weird that you did the Twilight movie and then went and did the story of Jesus. That's, yeah. weird. That's like weird to me. And number 10 is Courageous. It's a movie about cops who believe in Jesus and I don't care about it. So that's the whole list. But here's the thing that really got me thinking. Kirk Cameron is in no way on that list. No, no. And being a person who is not christian i thought he was the brad pitt of christian films <laughs> i thought he was just all over the place because he i mean at least in the media i mean he's everywhere but apparently it, he's more like the adam sandler of christian films yeah i'm kind of thinking he's given so. a lot of money to make these movies they're going nowhere but he, he <laughs> still keeps giving he still keeps getting this money to make these films Although I got to say, and we've talked about this out, outside of the podcast, I got to say, I did like Kirk Cameron's Left Behind. Yeah, I, I couldn't get through Act 1, man. I tried it. <laughs> but it's so much better than the freaking, uh, what's his name? Nicholas Crazy Cage. Guy? Nicholas Cage. It's so much better than the Nicholas Cage version. The Kirk Cameron version, at least you see badly CGI versions of what's happening. Uh, Kurt, uh, the Nicholas Cage one seems to entirely happen on a plane. Yeah. Not and it's Nicholas Cage sound bites? No, it's just it's it's so bad. It is so bad. And and I, I I remember seeing the Kirk Cameron version and saying, "Okay, this is a bad movie, but it's kind of fun, whatever. It's okay." But then seeing the Nicolas Cage version go, "Wow, I didn't think there could be a movie that was worse than the Kirk Cameron movie, but <laughs> good job, Nicolas Cage. Kirk Cameron is better at you than something, apparently." Yes. So here's my theory about God's Not Dead. Here's my theory about God's Not Dead. It's porn. Christian porn? It's Christian porn. Yes. Yes. Because normal people, when they want to watch porn, they go to Pornhub or X Hamster. They search BBW or Midget, and then bam, you get porn. (laughs) Yes. Uh But Christians can't do that. Really Quinn, frankly. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Christians can't do that. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying that they can't. Yeah, but they're all sitting back in the comfort of their own home, stroking their halos. Hmm. Hmm. But a Christian's version of porn would be a magical world where all, all Christians are right and everyone else is wrong. A Christian film for Christians to feel all Christianly about being Christian. That yes. is this film. Yes, especially especially film. if you're white. Yes. You can, be, you can be black, but only if you're an entertainer. <laughs> it's yeah. no, like there that. Is, there is another black person in this film. Yes. His name is G-Dog. <laughs> he's in the, the, the classroom in the beginning. Yes. And his name was G-Dog? My name is G-Dog something. Yeah. <laughs> I, I found that to be quite offensive that like the first black person you see in the movie is named G dog. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Now, we need to talk about the movie and the plot and all of that sort of thing. But before we do that, I think we need to discuss um, uh, all of the shit. All of the shit. Okay. Christianity, organized religion, all of it. So these are my problems with Christianity. Yes. Okay. This is going to be difficult, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to power through this. Okay. I do inherently believe that Christianity, the concept of Christianity, it's good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to have something, anything to believe in. And I believe that Christianity has helped many, many people. I'm a big fan of Christianity. My problem isn't with Christianity. It's with the conceited, self-righteous, big hair, big headed, arrogant asshole followers. Right. I don't have a problem with Christianity. It's the but followers any, of any religion is its followers. Yeah. So, and, so I'm sorry. I love you, but that's a cop out. It's, it's a, I, I just, I fucking hate these people. It, like I would be an atheist if I didn't believe that most atheists were very much assholes. Right. I mean, a lot of atheists are like in your face about it. Yeah. I mean, just because you don't believe in God doesn't mean that those who do believe in God are idiots. I that find is that correct, and you and, run a, and you run across some yeah. good Christians from time to time. But from what I see, they are well in the minority. You know, they're they're like they're like the good cops. Yeah. Where are all the good cops? Where are yeah. all the good Christians? Yeah, where are all the real Christians? You know, everything you see is you meet more assholes. Yeah, there's a and also. And I really do this. This is this is something I've believed for a really long time, but it's really coming into play now. What with uh, you know uh, 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 gay rights and all that sort of thing. Right. There's a difference between being Christian and being Christ-like. Yeah, because love thy enemy is in the Bible, whether Christians wanted to or not. Jesus never said to Mary Magdalene. I'm not going to be around you because you're a sinner and that goes against my lifestyle. Right. I don't hang around with whores. And I won't give you a pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Jesus never refused to give someone a pizza. Mm -hmm. It's like, here are loaves and fishes for everyone except sinners. <laughs> yes. You can't have the loaves and or the fishes because I don't believe because it, it oh it just upsets me so much mm -hmm. i mean it, are are you a christian who's going out and helping the poor or helping the homeless yeah. or are you a christian that's driving in your escalade past the poor and the homeless to get to church right exactly and thinks they Religion should be cleaned should be up they should get, you should get those homeless people off the streets I think that for the majority of Christians that are out there, Christianity is just like a self-help thing for them. And and in a lot a lot of cases, uh, a money scheme. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, you you know, not just the church itself, but if you go inside the church, you find a lot of people scamming off of stuff. Yeah. You know, you you find them all trying to tell you how you can buy a house with no money down. You know, and turn it around and. You know, how you can invest in junk bonds and, you know, all kinds of shit. My daughter Emerald is listening to the majority of, of this rant here. Hey, Emerald. And she, Hello. Did you hear her? I heard her. Wow. My, <laughs> Emerald just appeared on the podcast. She, wow. she, she said, very first well, you can be ag she said, well, you can be agnostic if you want to. You can right. be agnostic. And that's wow. pretty much how I feel that I am, you know, and frankly, I, I, I know I've seen what I would have to call the movement of God in my life, but you know, that's my God and you can't have them. You know what I mean? Nice. And, nice. and not only can't you have them, you wouldn't get them. You wouldn't understand them. <laughs> you know, this is yeah. how God chooses to represent himself in my life. And he's kind of an asshole sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here here's here's another thing that really bothers me about Christianity and organized religion. Yeah. Christian persecution exists but not in America. 
Uh, Chris, uh, yes, I, I, I will agree have, with that. Christians have really become a bunch of crybabies right now. I mean, if you are a Christian and you believe that you're being persecuted in America, what you need to do is you need to go to a foreign country like the Middle East or Iran, mm -hmm. say you're a Christian, and then they will behead you. Yes. That is Christian persecution. Christian persecution is America is just a myth because modern Christians are inventing a myth of martyrdom to make themselves feel better. Yes. You are not losing your right to free speech. No one is forcing you to denounce your faith. Forcing you to be nice to gay people is not religious persecution. No, not at all upsets me so much and also here's another thing stop comparing everything to the holocaust oh god yes and god, everyone to hitler me off. god that pisses me off like oh well this is a modern day holocaust no it's not a modern day holocaust uh-huh mm -hmm. you fuckers it's a, it's a couple of people who are getting married yeah maybe you find out about that from time to time <laughs> You know, like, like, I do not see this impacting my life. It's not the end of the world. Speaking of the end of the world, I have a really good list coming up. But before I get to that list, I have to, I have a message to any Christians who might be listening to this podcast. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Christians, the world is not ending. <laughs> These are not the end times. There are no prophecies coming true. And also, just because you disagree with someone or disagree with a major politician does right. not mean that he or she is the Antichrist. Right. Okay? When you say that the end times... The, you know, I might be able to put a case together of Hillary. That's all I'm saying there. Go ahead. Go ahead. When when you say things like the world is ending and there are signs and the end times are coming soon, what you sound like is a primitive caveman who is afraid of the sun god. Yes. Or an easily frightened ostrich mm -hmm. he, uh, hiding his or her head in the sand. And the world is only 11,000 years old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. Okay, science is not the enemy. You no, don't need not to, at all. You don't, you don't need to agree with science for science to be right. But now, again, for the sake of fairness, for the sake of fairness, I think we got to admit that right around now, the flip side of the coin, scientists are being some pretty smug motherfuckers about shit. Yes, they are. <laughs> Yes, they are. Neil deGrasse Tyson or Tyson deGrasse. He would be awesome to hang out with. <laughs> I would have a beer with Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is just being. I I I love him. I appreciate him, but he is being one smug son of a bitch on these topics. <laughs> and I never would have thought that Bill Nye, the Science Guy, would be such a loud mouth badass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Neil deGrasse Tyson right now is just like basically drunk and in a church just going, I dare any of you to fight me. Come on, you Christian sons of bitches. I'm Bill Nye the science guy, god damn it. I'll turn your litmus paper blue. My mother-in-law, if you talk to her about anything bad, then basically she will she will play like the end of the world card. Yeah. And she'll be like, oh, well, Tosh. It, well, that's just a sign of the end times, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, just, that's just Bible prophecy coming true. So I made a little list. Okay. Because there are a lot of people who <laughs> see things happening around them and they go, oh, well, that's just a sign of the uh, end times. Yes. So um, the first time that anyone predicted that the world was about to end yeah. was in the year 66. Uh, the Jewish people were revolting against the Romans, and people said, oh, well, this is a sign. The world is going to end now. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So I have a list of some of my favorite times that the world was going to end. 
<laughs> are you going multi-religion on this, or are you just staying yes. Christian? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes, I am. Okay. Multi-religion. In the year 500, people said that the end times were quickly approaching and that Jesus would return. In fact, people said that pretty much every time that, like, the, the speedometer changed over. Yeah. So people said that in the 99. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just like what you get. In 1284, there was a pope and his name was Pope Innocent III. Okay. What an awesome name for a pope that is. Makes me if want to break off a pope, piece of that pope. I know. If I was a, if I was Pope Innocent, I'd be doing like the worst shit in the world. <laughs> I'd be like doing drive-bys and snorting coke, and it's like, what, is, what do you mean? I'm Pope Innocent the Fifth. Yeah. You, I need a fresh bucket of fetuses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to crack them open and drink them like a beer. In fact, give me a beer. I'm going to drink some beers and fetuses. <laughs> Beers and babies. <laughs> yeah. So Pope Innocent III predicted that Armageddon would occur exactly 666 years after the founding of Islam. Okay. And that racist intolerance of I Islamic people would continue throughout Christianity to this day as evident with the horrible uh, Muslim plotline of today's movie, God is Not Dead. Yes. See how I tied everything back together there? Yeah, it was I, pretty nice. That. That Martin pretty Luther nice. Martin Luther predicted that the world would end at exactly the year 1600. Mm -hmm. He was, and this might come as a shock to you, he was wrong. Uh... Yeah, I, I might have to argue that with you. you yeah. <laughs> in 1853, the Crimean War, most a lot of people saw that as the Battle of Armageddon. Yeah. And the Battle of Armageddon is when is the battle in which Bruce Willis dies on the meteor instead of Batman. <laughs> God, I hate that movie. I hate that movie so much. In 1910, Halley's Comet, people saw this as the end of the world. And in 1999, Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins, the authors of the Left Behind series, predicted that Y2K would cause, would cause world spread chaos yes. and bring about the rise of the Antichrist. Um. So it, the, the, there's a Wikipedia page specifically devoted to all of the times that people have said that the world are going to end. Yeah. So I'm sorry I, if I... Did I ever tell you my Antichrist story? No. No, no, no. no. Okay. Because um, I'm still not sure. Well, anyway. <laughs> okay. So um, at some point in my internet life, I had found Coast to Coast. And it was still okay. Art Bell. You're familiar with this show? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm familiar with Art Bell, yes. Okay. So I find him, and this is like, I mean, this is not technically a podcast, but this is the first thing like a podcast I ever found. So I used yeah. to listen to, you know, old episodes of Art Bell and, you know, putter around. I had my house at the time. I was working on a fence, things like this. Uh, and if you remember... He used to every now and then have people call in if they believed they were the Antichrist. <laughs> Do you remember that? No, 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 no. I'm not too familiar with the intricacies of Art Bell's yeah. so, podcast. Go so ahead. He would have people who were calling in and doing like their best Larry Talbert impersonation. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, oh, I'm the Antichrist. Oh. And, and I kept thinking to myself, and I almost called. I swear I almost called. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, what a bunch of pussies these Antichrists are. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, I got, nice. and I got an image in my head of what I thought the Antichrist would be. You know, and I figured I figured he would just kind of be sort of like a really rich, entitled brat. <laughs> you know, just be like, yeah, I'm the Antichrist. You don't believe I'm the Antichrist? I don't give a fuck what you believe. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference to me. That Larry and, Talbot thing is pretty is pretty solid. Yeah, and and the one thing that I thought in my head if I was going to call in because at the same time they were doing a lot of Y two K shit as well, 
And I was like, you got to understand, I'm the Antichrist, and I find this all really hysterical that you all think the world is going <laughs> to end. And I did that. I just pulled this giant con job on you to make you believe that the world is going to end in 2000 with the whole Y2K thing. It's hysterical. But you know what's really going to be funny? After that does not happen, and you all look like morons, you wait and find out what happens in 2001. <laughs> And nice. like, I never actually did it, but that was my routine. You know, I worked up a little routine. I was like, I, I got to call him. <laughs> That's good. And then the buildings come down in 2001, and I'm like, oh, shit, man. <laughs> I shaved my head. <laughs> I, when I was, when I was growing up, I was Catholic. Yeah. With with finger quotes. I I was Catholic with finger quotes for a little while too, yeah. Because my 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 dad would constantly My dad was a strange guy. Yeah. My my parents the way I explain it is that my parents were both hardcore Mexicans. Yeah. In the sense that my dad would come home and he would expect dinner to be ready and uh -huh. he expected the beer to be chilled to the exact right temperature that he wanted. Yeah. And if the dinner wasn't done and the beer wasn't as cold as he wanted, he would go nuts sometimes. Uh, see, my, my parents, they put me in a, a private Catholic school specifically because I was so skinny that they didn't want me to get beaten up. Uh huh. Okay. That's not that did. That's not too. They didn't have too much faith in me in that regard. Yeah. But my. So I grew up. I went from first to, to eighth grade in a very strict Catholic school. We had nuns, we had rulers, the whole nine yards of what you expect. Yeah. But then I would come home and then my parents would be drinking and they'd be partying and cussing. And my dad was very racist and a, a very big pervert. Yeah. And and so I, it was strange because any time that I mentioned God or religion at all at home, my dad would say the same thing. And he would say, Stevie, 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 come here. Let me let me talk to you, Stevie. Now, you don't know my dad, but that's a pretty solid impression of my father okay but it's stevie stevie let me talk to you if god exists how come the holocaust happened but here's the thing i was like eight yeah i was like seven years old and my dad is like if the jews are god's chosen people then how come he had so many of them died in the holocaust explain that it's like okay i'm seven i was just watching muppet babies yeah uh-huh so yeah. I'm a bit confused as to what you're saying. And the closest you know about the Holocaust is Hogan's Heroes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? The Holocaust, that's when all of those, that's when the the host of Family Feud was in jail and there were comic Nazis mm -hmm. going, shoot. Yeah. The Holocaust, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. The Holocaust had a laugh track. And, and Bob Crane was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it was difficult because I was, I was Catholic ish. My mom, she, you know, my parents never went to church unless like all good Mexicans, there's a, a birth or a death. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Or, or like a, like a, like a christening or a baptism. But other than that, they never went to church, but my mom, she had the, the phone book of saints in her head. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing where it's like, no matter what happens in your life, there's some sort of Catholic saint for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So some would lose a job or someone would be sick or someone would accidentally end up with like a pink toe and there's a pink toe saint. Uh -huh. So suddenly a candle would appear. And apparently the one thing that saints really want is thank you notes in your local penny saver. Yes. This That's true. the one thing that all saints want. Yes. So I, it was weird because I grew up Catholic, but I was kind of on my own. 
with the whole Catholicism thing, but I, I felt, and I honestly felt growing up that I had come up with a loophole, which would save mankind. Okay. I was reading the Bible on my own, and there's a specific Bible quote that I am familiar with, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, in which the Bible specifically says that Jesus says that no one knows the day or hour when the world will end. Uh Uh-huh. So I thought, well, if I just wake up every morning and say, today is the day that the world will end, <laughs> then I will save the world while I'm alive. Yes. Uh-huh. Like I came up with a loophole like, fuck you, God, today's the day so the world is going to end. If the world doesn't end, that just means I'm right, you bitch. <laughs> Good and loophole. I, yeah, it's a loophole. But the fact that the Bible says this means that anytime anyone says, oh, well, this is the end times, it's like, no, you are wrong. And your own Bible says that that's wrong. Mm-hmm. And here's another thing that upsets me about Christianity, but this is less about Christianity and more coming from the fact that I may or may not work at a major bookstore chain. Yeah. Know the differences between the fucking Bibles. Yeah, okay. It upsets me so much. People come in. Yeah, do you have any Bibles? Yeah, they're right here. Uh, is there a specific one you're looking for? Oh, I don't know. I'll just start opening them up and see. It's like okay. the Bible is the basis for your religion. So the least you can do is know the difference between the King James and the New King James uh-huh. and the New International and the New Revised Standard Edition. There are different versions of the Bible. And the fact that you don't know which one you're looking for yeah. really makes you a bad Christian. Yeah. When, when I was a religion student, I had, I had a Catholic Bible, which has many more books. It has the Book of Maccabees, which the Mormons are all off about. Oh, 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 Mormons, 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 Mormons. Mormons. Okay, so (laughs) (laughs) I created my first orgasm on air. (laughs) Yes, yes it was. I created my own religion, right? I created my own religion. And in my religion, I specifically say that Edward is a savior not the savior. And the reason why I do this is because I'm a big fan of religious freedom. You can believe whatever the hell you want to believe. And I can believe whatever the hell I want to believe. I didn't want to go around like so many other fake religions on the internet. Not that Buddhism is a fake religion, but I didn't want to be one of those people. That's like my, my religion, the, the church of Aquaman, the spaghetti monster is the big one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the church of snails is the one true religion, and all other religions are fake. You are all stupid for believing in your religions, and we are the only... So I came up with a very friendly sort of idea that Edward is a savior, not the savior. Yes. You can believe whenever you want to. Let us have our own little corner of the world. But religious freedom, it, it's, it's a two-way street, because let me believe in what I believe in. Mm -hmm. You can believe in what you believe in. Right. It's when you start saying that what you believe in is the only thing to believe in. Yes. That's when we're going to come to blows. Right. And to, to dig a little deeper, turn over another shovel full of dirt on this one. You know, they have always taught us that, monotheism is the more advanced version of polytheism but you do not see that anywhere and that is so far away from the fucking truth okay? that was one of the, that was one because of the things even the catholics are basically a polytheistic religion with yeah. all of the saints and with Mary and there's a hierarchy and these angels are over here and these angels are over here and <laughs> these do this and these do that, you know, and, and like, that seems how, how religion should really evolve. And Ed Wood is kind of like a part of that, you know, any, any time you can take a person or something and make a symbolic object out of it then it has purpose. And for me, Ed Wood makes such a beautiful, he teaches me a lot. I'm sorry, just looking at his life and analyzing his life, he teaches me a lot. And he teaches me about failure. And he teaches me about, 
not getting your dreams. You know, at, at, the, at the time that I at the time that I created my religion, I was dating a woman named Sarah Snow. And if we ever do a podcast on the Big Lebowski, I'll have to bring her into it because I was it, when I went to go see the Big Lebowski. I, I've been thinking about this. If we ever do a Big Lebowski um, podcast, I want to get an interview with her. Yeah. Because the, I saw the Big Lebowski the day it came out in the theater with her and her mom and dad, and it was probably one of the most uncomfortable experiences you could ever see a movie with. Yeah, it, it was really uh, complicated. But when I when I created Woodism, I was dating her, and she was very like, "I can't be Wood is I can't be a a, a Woodite. I am Catholic," and I just just really simple just came up with. Why can't you be both? Yeah. Why can't you get this thing that I created and add it to something else? Why can't you be a Christian Woodite? Why can't you be, uh, you know, it's not like, it's not like you're filling out a census form and you have to pick one thing. Right. And nothing else. Religion is something where you can, you know, it's a buffet. Mm. You don't have to just eat the chicken. Yeah. If you don't mind, I would like to take a quick break. Uh, I just got yes. the message. Jeannie is on the way home, and I like to have these kind of finish up for when she gets home so we can just relax and unwind. So let's take a little break. I will insert something here. Um, not sure what yet, and then we'll <laughs> kind of try to wrap this up the best we can. Okay. There's a lot that we haven't even covered. I know. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So we'll be right back after this short message. War of the Toculus, Pope on Film, like our Facebook page by searching Pope on Film. Pope on Film! You can follow us on Twitter at Pope on Film. Or email us at Pope at UndeadCow.com. Not sure how to listen? Well, just find us in the iTunes store. By searching a dead cow. It's all one word. And you know, if, if you're really hard, hard up, you can always find us on Stitcher. And of course, YouTube at youtube.com slash users slash our dead cow film. I gotta go home and try to talk my girlfriend into an abortion. Very much shame now. Never cried. I'm going to let go of my high school days. I Want to be a member? Want to be a member? No. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> if you're ready to I, be back. I would like to say something right now. Okay. It might cause me to get hit. Okay. But I kind of did something bad-ish. What do you do? That has to do with the person who is next to me. So I, I figured I'd, I've what? had. Oh, I figured I have had enough beers that I might be able to admit to this. OK, so remember yesterday, we it, it, not yesterday, but the last podcast, we were talking about the Oogie Loves. And you said that watching the Oogie Loves had totally fucked with your like Netflix algorithm. Yes. <laughs> so I kept this. So I said, "Okay, I'm gonna sit down and watch God's Not Dead." Oh God damn it! Once I do that, that's gonna fuck with my Netflix you algorithm. You did it on mine. <laughs> <laughs> ow! Ow! You did it. That really? You Why shouldn't. Why did you do that? You shouldn't be that strong. We have recorded <laughs> evidence of spousal abuse. <laughs> no, that was Emerald. That was Emerald that hit me. Oh, that was Emerald? Okay. Oh, yeah, I watched it on Emeralds. Why? I have a very specific system. <laughs> so, so are we possibly thinking that Netflix needs to incorporate a feature that is, yes, I want to watch this, but don't tell anybody? <laughs> yes, they should. <laughs> Emerald, you I just saved your soul. You should be thankful. I'm not. She's not thankful. Well she is thankful. I'm going to hell by no way. Maybe she should watch Heaven is Real. <laughs> <laughs> 
so that'll I have straighten a, her out. <laughs> I have a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about about my problems with Christianity. Okay, go. Harry Potter is evil. Um, kinda. <laughs> This really upsets me. I and also I work or or may not work at a bookstore in Oklahoma and I have heard or possibly have not heard some really horrible things about Harry Potter. Here are some of the things that I may or may not have heard from customers. All right. The Harry Potter books are evil. They are satanic books. Reading them opens the door to evil spirits. Yes. And that the books are gateways to the occult. Just like Led Zeppelin. Thinking these things are no different than being afraid of the boogeyman mm -hmm. or being afraid of uh, vampires or werewolves or Slender Man, which is apparently a thing now, which is fucking stupid. It's all superstitious nonsense. Now, when I was in... When I may or may not have worked at a bookstore in Arizona, yeah. we actually had to move our Harry Potter section because the way that the store was aligned, it was right next to the Bibles. Oh, my God. Yeah. And people just went nuts. People just went nuts. And in Arizona, there are a lot of old white people, and they just went crazy. So we had to move <laughs> our entire store because Christians just would not have it. A couple of days ago, I uh, may or may not have been talking to a customer, and the customer said, I'm looking for a book for my son. He's nine. He doesn't like to read. And I said, does he like Star Wars? Because there's a really good series of books by Jeffrey Brown, uh -huh. and they're called Jedi Academy. And they're essentially Diary of a Wimpy Kid, but with Jedis at Jedi Academy. It's really cute. Yeah. So I, so I said, does he like Star Wars? And the woman said, no Star Wars, no Harry Potter, nothing evil. Oh, my God. Star Wars. Like, I no now, now, Harry Potter, I have heard a lot of that. This is the first time I've ever heard of Star Wars. But honestly, I do not understand how Christians could say, oh, well, Harry Potter is evil. Lord of the Rings, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. I hate Harry Potter. Star Wars? Oh, that's perfectly acceptable. Because if you're going to believe that one bit of fiction is evil, you really do have to think that everything fiction is evil. Yes. Because this is just, it's absolutely ridiculous. And here's another thing that bothers me about Christianity. Okay. You are not talking directly to God. Oh, no. It really upsets me because there are there are monks in, on top of a mountain somewhere who have not spoken for 40 years and they spend 12 hours a day praying to God in the hopes to one day hear God's voice. And yet a fat housewife from Oklahoma wasn't sure if she should buy a new car. So she prayed on it. Uh -huh. And God spoke to her. And here's the kicker. She spoke back and they had a back and forth, a conversation, <laughs> if you will. Because when I was in Sacramento, um, we lived right next door to my in-laws and they would help us out with paying bills and this and that as long as we would go to church. Right. So I went to a lot of, of uh, churches, to a lot of uh, uh, Sundays. Yes. at church over in Sacramento because I had to. And then it, when we moved to Oklahoma, we would uh, go with them to their church group in Oklahoma. And I stopped going to church in Oklahoma at the point when the pastor of, of the church in Seminole, Oklahoma, specifically said, I have a son and I love my son. I sometimes want to show my son that I love him. And so I do that. I kiss him. But there's nothing wrong with that. Just because I kiss my son doesn't make me a homo. <laughs> and everybody, everybody in the church is just, a amen, yes, amen, amen. That don't make you a homo. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And it's just like, okay, I'm done. 
<laughs> I just I, I I looked at Natasha. Just I'm done. I'm out. Yeah, I'm out. Cannot do this anymore. But it really did bother me that so many people were convinced that, and I think this is an American invention that. I am having a problem. I'm going to pray to God. God's going to talk back to me. So then I'm going to ask him a question and he's going to talk to me. And I heard this so many times in Sacramento and Mm -hmm. also here in Oklahoma, that whole like, uh, well, I'm just wasn't sure what to do about my business. So I prayed and God came to me and told me to let it go. And I said, why? And he said, because you trust me and I am the Lord. And I said, "Okay, Lord, it's like, no, you're not fucking talking to him. Are you so conceited? That you think that you are literally – that God is just like, I know you people over here in this country are poor and dying and hungry. Yeah. But I need to talk to Mike about his car business. Yeah. I uh, went through an angelical phase and I went to this church and uh, there was one particular guy who was like kind of a higher up, you know. And at one point, the pastor was doing his little like kind of sermon, and he was going to bless people for this and this and this. And this guy gets up for a blessing, and, you know, he wants his business blessed. And he was like, what's the name of the business? Oh, the Lord's Appliance. It's like, okay. (laughs) And that was a big hit in the church and everything like that. But I wound up working for this guy for a week, okay? And it was A1 Appliance, (laughs) okay? (laughs) Like, it's only Lord's Appliance when he's in the church. Other than that, you look it up in the phone book, A1 Appliance. <laughs> look at his business cards, A1 Appliance. <laughs> I had that conversation with, I think, my youngest daughter a couple of days, a, a couple of, uh, like, months ago. Mm-hmm. Because we, we passed by some place, and it was, like, triple A insurance. Yes. Or A1 Finance. And I'm like... See, kids, before the internet, you had phone books. Yes. And to make sure you were at the top of the phone book, you would call yourself A A A A A A A A insurance. So you would be at the top of the phone book for uh-huh. that category. I felt so old. <laughs> I know, I, I know. It's weird when you when you say something like so simple. And you say it to somebody who's on the young side and they kind of cock your head at you like a like a like a basset hound. <laughs> There's a book that's really popular right now and it's a paperback book and it's written by Connor Franta. Connor yeah. Oh god, I cannot believe that you I thought you might freak out about this, but I didn't think you would freak out, Emerald, and it's so wonderful that you just freaked out. Like I have no idea who Connor Franta is. Connor Franta. Franta? Franta. Connor Franta. Say, I have no, man. Say, I have no you. idea she who this person you. is. But apparently he's big on YouTube and he wrote a book. Yeah. And it's like I, I just I have such a hard time comprehending the idea that this person is famous because he has a lot of followers on a website. But so many people are do you have mm-hmm. Connor Franta's new book? Or Franta? Franta, do you have Connor Franta's new book? <laughs> it's like, it's like I have, I, it's like a different language, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I have no clue. A lot of people are getting famous on the internet. You know what? Fuck this. This is part of why I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, I mean, a, a lot of, Justin Bieber got famous off of the internet, which it's may prove so the weird. internet is satanic. Like, he... It, the thing that I love about Justin Bieber, I love Justin Bieber. And the reason why I love Justin Bieber is he got his start singing Christian songs on YouTube. Yeah. And he was just the perfect little in- angelic darling of Christianity. Yeah. He's like Vanilla Ice 2.0. Yeah. And then you <laughs> just look at him now and he's got his tattoos and he's flipping everybody off and getting high and it's just like oh yeah. i'm watching you fall oh yeah it's so great mm-hmm. oh man like i knew one day you would fall and it's just so great to see you i felt okay. that about justin bieber and michael jackson it's just so great to see bieber fall okay how about this yes okay anybody listening to the show okay Write us on our on our uh, 
Facebook page, okay, the Pope on Film, and put in a comment for the date that you think Justin Bieber is going to be found dead naked in a bathtub. This is the best, um, the best uh, contest ever. Because it's going to happen, and at that point, I, I will have some sort of a prize. It will be maybe Bob on Blu-ray, which I'm currently working on, or Bob on DVD, if you prefer, or you know whatever my current project is at that time, you will get a free copy of that. If we can come up with, with better prizes as this goes on, because like, he's not going to keel over tomorrow, we, yeah. we will update that, okay? Okay. Yeah. I okay. want to hear from you on this subject. What is the date that Justin Bieber is going to fi- be found dead, naked in his bathtub? This is good. This is good. Uh-huh. This is good. I like this. Uh-huh. So, so I, I just want to quickly touch on some points of the actual movie before we finish. Um, Josh has been tasked with debating the existence of God with the evil liberal professor. Yes. Uh, he, uh, he, what's his name? Kevin Sorbo. Yes. Hercules. But he never in any way 100% proves the existence of God. I mean, the only real argument for God in this movie is that you can't disprove his existence, and that's a real big cop-out. Yes. I but, found it interesting that Kevin Sorbo, in like his opening speech, not the first day of class, okay, but his yes. opening speech as he was talking about this, quotes Descartes, who was probably one of the biggest Christian philosophers <laughs> when he wasn't doing, you know, when he wasn't doing graphs. You know, I mean, everything about him, even I think therefore I am, comes from his philosophies where he is trying to prove the existence of God, as many philosophers from that period going backwards were. Yeah. They, but um, Josh's girlfriend. Cunt. Cunt. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Number one, I. I I believe in women's rights and I believe in feminism and I try not to be sexist, but I want to be sexist right now because this is a Christian movie and uh, Josh's girlfriend is a hot ass bitch. Yes, she is. I will give her that, but I am sorry. She, she did something that is such a big trigger for me in relationships, you know, it's just such a big thing. When I she forbid- says, I forbid you, oh, yes, I forbid you, you know, I immediately kind of, like, turn gangsta at that moment, and I'm like, who, you who breaks up you with somebody? No, 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 say that again. It was really fucking cute. What did you say? What did you say? You forbid me. Oh, that is so, so adorable. That's really adorable. Um, you really need to leave now, or things are going to get bad. <laughs> you know? Breaks up with someone because they're debating the existence of God in a college <laughs> philosophy class. Like, yeah. who does that? That doesn't exist. But here's the thing. Josh is obviously a slack-jawed yokel, so he probably needs a bitch in his life. <laughs> he's, not, he's not capable of making decisions. Yeah. That really, the thing that really pissed me off about Josh is that he had his mouth open for, I swear, about 80% of this movie. <laughs> this okay. movie, like, he, yeah. like I, I felt that he was acting like a slack-jawed yokel, and then I realized he was literally slack-jawed. Yes. Because for most of this movie, his mouth is open. Like he's going to attract flies or something. Mm-hmm. It became like a like a Rocky Horror Picture Show thing for me, where yeah. I just kept saying like, "Close your mouth, Josh." Yeah. Josh, close your mouth seriously. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, you know, uh, again, I, and it's something a, a man shouldn't have to say as many times as I do. But I am not homosexual. Uh, but but <laughs> but he did have. DSL man, he had DSL, and I, 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 I wanted to violate him to see him cry, and then jump off the Tallahassee Bridge because he would do it. That is so awesome. Mm-hmm. That's such an awesome thing. 
I mean, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be sex for sex. It would be sex because I know it would just destroy his whole fucking universe. <laughs> but the thing that's really messed up about this movie is the fact that eventually Josh learns that Professor Radisson is only an atheist because God took away his mommy. Yes. And he says the the quote, that is why, Wheaton, you will find the most committed atheists were once Christians. That is some really dangerous stereotyping. <laughs> the idea that all atheists um, are just one prayer away from changing. Yeah. Yeah. There's no real atheist. They're just backslidden. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 it's and if you think about it in a certain way, it's not too terribly untrue, but that's just how society is. You know, most of us were rela- raised in some form of Christian religion and would have had to have dumped it to, to become atheist or agnostic or whatever it is you believe. It's really messed up to think that, like... I think it was the Onion AV Club who specifically said that like all all atheists were just once violated and they just want they're just waiting to to uh, be violated again. No, to, to, to show again. you on the doll where God touched you <laughs> in the dark with candles. But Pink then this Pink all Floyd. <laughs> but then it it all leads to a final debate where the people who wrote the script for this totally stole the thunder from a few good men. Yeah. Where Josh is there, do you hate God, Professor Radisson? Did you order the code red? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, really, really sad. Yeah. I, then, I, I did like that they brought up the Big Bang, because I hear a lot of Christians shitting on the Big Bang these days. And I remember when, when Christians embraced the Big Bang. Yeah. For exactly the reasons that were given in the movie. I, I, I do not believe in the Big Bang, and I will tell you why. Okay. Um, I really do feel that the whole show is just really bad writing. Like, like, like the whole show, the Big Bang Theory, is just a uh, uh, science quote, philosophy quote, science quote, mathematics quote quote from star trek and then everyone else is like oh man this is such a funny tv show it's like my friends and i are talking so is it like the oogie loves for nerds i think that a lot of people who like the big bang theory are actually they're not laughing with the nerds they're laughing at the nerds oh yeah you know what i'm saying i have not watched the show i i've heard mixed things and uh it, I really don't like it. I really do not like it. The only thing that I like about it is that the the nerdy guy who stars in it not not the big tall skinny one that's in everything now. Yeah. But the I, little I, small one with the glasses. He was in the movie Suicide Kings, and I love that movie. Yeah. When it comes to TV shows, you know, and things like that, and even movies to a certain regard. Uh, I got a lot of shit to do, man. You know, I got a lot of things I need to be doing where if I hear one bad thing about a TV show, you know, I'm not going to watch it, you know? And if you tell me, if you tell me, well, you have to get through the first one or two seasons. Like I've heard a lot, like I've heard a lot with Breaking Bad and I haven't watched Breaking Bad. Like I I don't have time to waste myself, waste my life on two fucking seasons that you yourself, a fan are admitting are kind of shitty. I have not watched Breaking Bad. I downloaded a bunch of Breaking Bad. And when my oldest daughter saw that I had downloaded Breaking Bad, she got really upset with me. Yeah. Like, you, you downloaded Breaking Bad. And I agree with I agree with her because I don't like Breaking Bad. I think that it, it glorifies the making of dangerous drugs. And there are a lot of cases out there of people that are like, oh, I'm going to cut up my girlfriend the same way that they did on Breaking Bad. And, you know, a lot yeah. of people that are thinking that they can make a quick amount of money from making meth because of this stupid ass TV show. But I really want to power through it because I know that um, one of the members of Mr. Show with Bob and David are in this TV show. Okay. Because Better Call Saul is on TV right now. And it's Uh. a TV show spinoff of 
Breaking Bad. And I just love the fact that there were two people who were on the TV show, Mr. Show. Yeah. Bob Odenkirk and David Cross. David Cross exploded. He was on Arrested Development Mm -hmm. and he he was he's an amazing actor. Then he started doing those chipmunk movies and he kind of like crashed and burned. Yeah. But I always wondered, while David Cross is everywhere, what happened to Bob Odenkirk? Because he he was 50 percent of the show, uh-huh. you know. So now um, he has his own TV show and it's a spinoff of Breaking Bad. So I know I just have to power through Breaking Bad so I can watch the show I actually want to watch. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, it does. It's like, yes, it does. God, a lot like, of people are doing that, too. I don't want to watch Breaking Bad because I feel like it's just glorifying things the same way that people love Scarface, which I don't understand. Yeah. But God, I just I got to power through Breaking Bad so I can watch uh, Bob Odenkirk be amazing. (laughs) But we got to get to the ending of God's Not Dead because it all ends at a concert of the band The Newsboys. Yes. What a horrible name for a band. (laughs) Newsboys. Mm-hmm. So everybody is so all of the plot lines, all the pulp fiction y plot lines come together. The liberal blogger is perhaps cured of cancer through because the, the power news- of Jesus. Yes. And the newsboys. Uh-huh. And the newsboys. The evil professor dies, but not before turning to Jesus on his deathbed. And yes. that's really fucked up. He was killed and- by a car going about 20 miles an hour. Yes. On an empty yes. street. Yeah. And then the whole concert and that douchebag from Duck Dynasty celebrate Josh's win. Yes. And then the Newsboys concert happens. Here's the awesome thing about this. Okay. Um, the Newsboys is a Christian pop rock band that was founded in 1985. Wow. This band, this band has been around for so long that they were actually worried that their name would be confused with Huey Lewis and the News. Oh, my God, yeah. It was the last time you cared about Huey Lewis and the News, you know? Mm -hmm. They have released 16 albums in their career, but one of the co-founders, whose name is George Perdiccas, he left the group in 1990, and in 2007... He became an atheist. Uh Uh-huh, okay. Did did Uh, God kill his mommy? uh, No, no. No? God did not kill his mommy. But the interesting thing is, like, I went to the Wikipedia page for Newsboys expecting to hear about how George Perdiccas, the founding member, is now an atheist. Was his his dad biggest Perdiccas? Maybe. Maybe. But he wrote an article for the website patheos.com, and I wanted to read the ending. I think this is really awesome. Okay. Recently, the Newsboys were featured in the movie God's Not Dead. The movie demonstrates the pervasive attitude of Christians. They demonize everyone while giving a pass to their own particular brand of Christianity, making themselves look like fluffy white angels with perfect synchronized lives. Yes. The truth is... From someone who knows what went on then and what goes on now, the newsboys aren't as holy as they profess. Instead of wearing a mask of righteousness, they should acknowledge that they are struggling as much as everyone else. Now that is a movie I would like to see. (laughs) Nice. A couple of days ago, I had, uh, it was Saturday or Sunday. I had a customer who was following me at yeah. work. He may or may not have been following me. In 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 retrospect, he probably was not following me. It was just a bizarre coincidence. But he had on a newsboy's shirt. Okay, yeah. And I am so normally a paranoid individual that I got it in my head that he had somehow heard what I was going to do. And it was trying to like <laughs> do me in or something. Yeah. So I'm like, Oh my God, that guy with the newsboy shirt is still following me. He must know. How does he know? Does he know what I'm going to do? It was a God. It was a shirt from their God's not dead tour. And I'm like, Oh crap. This guy knows. 
<laughs> this guy knows what I'm going to say. How does he know? And then I realize, oh, wait a second. It's not Monday. So I haven't mentioned yet on the podcast uh -huh. that doing God is not dead. So this is just a bizarre coincidence. But I was still really freaked out. I think I understand the paranoia, especially leading up to it. But I think it's much more likely that he was thinking to himself, I'm going to catch the Mexican stealing something. <laughs> there was one time I was at work. This was in uh, California. And uh, I'm just walking around seeing if there's anyone that needs help. And there was a, a white businessman who eyed me yeah. and must have thought that I was some sort of troublemaker because he's like, excuse me, can I help you? And I said, <laughs> well, um, I work here. <laughs> and yes, you can. <laughs> so I should be saying that to you. There's some boxes Do in the you back need help? Pack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, the, the, the thing is, is that a lot of what's happening right now with the Christianity and the religious right and the far right in America, yeah. I do think that there's a reason for all of it. I think, and I might be mistaken here, but I'm pretty sure I'm right, that all of what's happening right now in America is simply the last gasp of the white majority. I think that may be possibly correct, yeah. There's a lot of because weird stuff going on in the world in both directions. The world has changed a lot, even yeah. in the last 10 years, like a lot, you know? So... Eh. But I do think that, like, like you know, the, the majority of, of not just the white majority in America, but also, you know, the baby boomers, which are slowly but surely, like, going bye-bye. Yeah. You know, it, they know that in just a few decades, it's all going to, you know, the, the minorities are going to be the majority in America, that pretty soon there's going to be more Mexicans than there are whites in America. Yeah. And so it's no surprise that America is suddenly finding this turn to ultra conservatism and old school Christian values and mm -hmm. let's make gays not have rights anymore and stuff like that yeah. it's not a surprise no no it's really not it's not at all i i i don't i don't think that i can talk about god's not dead anymore <laughs> i don't think i can do it what do you what do you think you want to do next week uh what kind of a palate cleanser I need something easy. This has been a very difficult two weeks. L L Oogie Loves and then God's Not Dead. I need something that won't upset me. Lebowski's on Netflix, man. I can watch that movie a million damn times. I can do that. There's Pulp Fiction, you know. Um, Pulp Fiction. I want to show Pulp Fiction to my oldest daughter because yeah. I want to give her a movie education. I want yeah. to give her a movie -cation. All you do is write down my comments. Huh? All you would do is write down my comments. No, if I saw Pulp Fiction with you, I would probably watch you more than I would the screen. I know. Honestly. <laughs> hey, you know what's in the movie? You know what's in the movie Pulp Fiction? Clutch Cargo. You remember Clutch Cargo <laughs> with the lips that were moving? Remember, I got the kids all into that, and you got all pissed. She walked away. <laughs> I had a clutch cargo phase. My this the weirdo uh, supermarket near our house had a clutch cargo DVD for a dollar, and I yeah. bought it. Oh man, that was wonderful. <laughs> that was wonderful. Clutch cargo and his pal Skipper and Tenderfoot yeah. and another exciting adventure. Aqua Wizards. <laughs> oh. That was wonderful. God. So should we, we book uh, the Big Lebowski? Yes. All right. Let's, yes, let's do that. Yeah, because we do need a power, uh, yeah, a power clean and cleaner. Uh, it's been a rough couple of weeks. <laughs> yes, it has. Mm -hmm. This will be fun. Yeah. Love yeah. that movie. I love that movie. It's one of those movies that I could just turn on and watch and I could say all the lines and it's just a great soundtrack and it's just I love it. But here's the, I don't know why I love it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to put your finger on exactly. It's a it's a really strange. It's a strange it's it's a weird movie that makes me want to go bowl. 
Yes. Like how? Yes, how it does. Is that? And I, I think that people have gotten a more idealistic view of the dude than the dude actually is in the movie. Yeah. You yeah. know. He's like a dude prototype. And yeah. Jeff Bridges has totally become the dude. He just is the dude now. He has. He absolutely <laughs> has. Oh, and I had, I had mentioned something about, oh, the Nazi flick. Yeah, the Nazi flick. I don't even know what it's called, but I'll find it. Uh, and then I'll post it in, in the Facebook group. Um, let's go with that for homework and just picture them being ham-fisted. As you watch okay. it. Okay. Well, you'll have to find it. Yes. I want, I, I forgot something that I was going to say, cause I was in the middle of like an inside shin, like oh. an, an aside within an aside. Yes. I believe in religious freedom, but there are exceptions. Okay. Number one, Scientology. Cause they're just a bunch of goddamn nut jobs. And, and it's, it's Scientology is ruining lives. And I was really excited when that HBO documentary came out. Yeah. Going clear. There was nothing in there that I didn't already know. I was just happy that the network that shows Game of Thrones was telling everyone else what I have already known. Yeah. I was I, really excited about that. I really want to meet John Travolta one day. Because <laughs> I really just want to walk up to him and just look at him and be like, John, everybody knows already, okay? Right? It's not a big deal anymore. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. Just let it go. You, you like the cock. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You, you, you like the cock, okay? Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Doesn't mean you have to worship Xenu. Suck the cock. Just do it. Do it. Now... Uh, in my list of exceptions for religious freedom, Mormonism is on there, but they have a pass. Okay. Because their belief system is absolutely nuts. Yes. The, the whole, the whole, the, like golden plates and a seer stone, and uh -huh. it, it, it's all just absolutely nuts. It's but, of the destiny night. <laughs> yeah. But Mormonism has a past because honestly, they're the nicest fucking people. They really are. They are so fucking nice. And I dated can, Mormon can, for like a year and a half and god damn, they're just the nicest people. They're so nice you forget that what they believe in is bad shit crazy. Yeah. I remember in New York they where where we had nary a Mormon at all. Uh they used to have commercials on TV about it all the time, Mormonism and the Book of Mormon and all that, and you can call for a free copy. And again, I was a religious student, and I was like, free religious book? I'll do that. So I called them, and I had them send me a copy of the Book of Mormon. The Bible, too. Yes. Electric Boogaloo. The sequel, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Jesus in the City. Um, and <laughs> And when I was on the phone with them, they were like, and would you like us to send a missionary around um and i was like no and they never did they never did and we have mormons who who show up at the door and i'm just like no nah, no thanks guys and they're like oh it's okay all right you know you have a really good day all right <laughs> lame yeah okay. my 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 wife was uh uh bringing mormon missionaries in for a while Bringing them in. Oh, yeah, they'll yeah. clean the house and shit. And talking with them and stuff, yeah. Yeah. She was just excited to, to be, oh, my God, they're just so nice. Like, when I when I dated a Mormon, like, I, I, had, I had been in the temple and I had talked with them and, and everything. Um, there was a storm and one of their houses, one of the Mormon uh, elders, their yeah. house was completely destroyed in the storm, just absolutely destroyed. So all of the Mormons took a week off of work. All of the Mormons in the temple, they had taken a week off of work and spent the entire week just from morning until night building this guy a new house. Yeah. And I just, I just saw this and I went, I can't think of a single Christian church that would do this. No. No. It's like not a single one, because for Christians, it, church, church is just a, 
Like, I want to be seen at church. Yeah. And it's interesting because I, I totally agree with you, but it's interesting that we will accept batshit crazy as long as you l- try to live the good parts of what the Bible says. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can be batshit crazy. But if you're feeding and sheltering the homeless, go ahead. <laughs> you could be yeah. as batshit crazy as you want. We're not exactly. going to say anything about it. Christians don't Christians don't have the craziest of belief systems, but most of them are assholes. Yes. Who are only in it for themselves, and that I'll have I'll have no bit of. Yes. And I feel a lot of Christians are forcing Christianity down everyone's throat, and they need to realize that they're not the only religion out there. Right. And I really do see Christianity going down the road where I'm going to have a problem when they're forcing – when their belief of religious freedom is forcing everyone to be Christian, I'm going to have a problem with that. Yeah. I'm okay with Mormonism being bad shit crazy as long as you guys are actually out there doing good things. Right. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Oh, I think I think the one thing that we can all agree in is that the one true religion is Buddhism. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm a little biased, but yeah, I got to give that a yes. Yeah, yeah. So everybody should go to edwood.org, and I'll probably update my blog eventually. So yeah. there's that. And also, mm-hmm. everyone should become a member of Do It or Die. Do it or die. Yeah. What is that? That's, that's the organization where we all wear candles on our heads. Oh, okay. Yes. And we live in the sewers. Yes. And we just go up to people. Want to be a member? Want to be, be a member? member. <laughs> God. Yes. I will send you the link for that cracked article because all of those cartoons are just gold. Yeah. I, you know, I, 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 we should do that. Okay. We should get like copies of Plan 9 from Outer Space in bulk, you know, and put a card with the website on it in, in the DVD and just knock on people's doors and look at them and go, want to be a member? Want to be a member? Hand them the disc and leave. That is such a great idea to make. The movie Planet Night from Outer Space, our chick track. <laughs> that is such a good idea. God, that's that's a that's like a that's an award winning idea right there. Yeah. We are you and I are going to have to do a commentary to one of these movies one day too. Uh the commentary for Oogie Loves, that's probably already out by the time this podcast comes out. But I I, I really I really one day want to sit down and do a commentary that explains the three caballeros to people. Cause it's just <laughs> like, if you've never seen it, it's just the weirdest thing in the world. Okay. So now Donald duck is getting drunk. Okay. Donald duck wants to have sex with this woman. Okay. Now this woman is selling cookies and he's asking these horny Mexican men if they're hungry and they're all saying, I want some, I want some, but they're not talking about the cookies. Yeah. Because she is attractive. It's a really fucked up movie. <laughs> so the next next week, The Big Lebowski, I'm looking forward to that. Yes. Yes. And I will try and get an interview mm-hmm. with Sarah Snow, my ex-girlfriend who I went to go see the movie with. Yeah. Because I she is a creative type. And she is a big talker, uh-huh. and I am 100% convinced that she will have a lot to talk about in regards to this film. Cool. Nice. Nice. I get an interview. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more offline. Sweet. I didn't mean that to sound as ominous <laughs> as it suddenly did. No, no. Uh, <laughs> as soon as you said that, I was in the middle of drinking a beer. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. You ready to wrap it up? Is this I'm pretty sure that this episode is longer than the Oogie Loves. Like I didn't think that an episode could be longer than our Oogie Loves episode, but I'm pretty sure that we did it. It's hard to tell, man. It's really hard to tell because um there's a lot of dead space that I'm gonna have to cut out from how often we were dropping connection. Yeah. Uh the recorder I yeah. use is saying uh 
two hours, 48 minutes. God. Really? But that's going to have to be trimmed down a bit. God. So it's right up there with Oogie Loves. Yeah. God, I like seriously, like next week could be like a like an hour long. <laughs> the big Lebowski, like, like, let's just have fun next week. Well, the interview with your friend might be an hour long. <laughs> she is a talker. Yeah. And she if is it is, hey, you know, have fun. Do it. You know, what the hell? Yeah. No, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> But until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am uh, Reverend Steve Galindo. And thank you for listening. And see you next week, you godless heathens. (laughs) Cut and print. Thank you for joining us.